on the walls of a hospital room, where the shadows of death intertwine with the destinies of those who still want to live, Dash Hale, who knows that he is near his end, laughs self-deprecatingly when he knows that the time is approaching of his death. By the time he believed he was at the end of it, his life blossomed like a sakura tree, but things were not the same as in his past life. When he realizes that he is in a world where karate and kung fu are more relevant than he thought since he recognized certain people who until before his death were fiction, Dash with his new opportunity to enjoy his life embarks on your most ardent desires. At some point, everyone will fall before the dragon warrior, who will grow in values and pride. What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn in Cobra Kai? Become the Dragon Warrior, Part 1. Remember to check out the original story, the link is in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. San Gabriel Hospital. In front of the windows on the second floor of this hospital, a majestic sakura tree unfolded its splendor with grace. Everyone could see how its delicate pink flowers danced with the breeze and the wind. However, in a poignant symbolism, its branches began to undress, leaving behind a tapestry of leaves that witnessed the change of season and the fragility of life, providing a bitter reminder for those who observe this tree from the inside every day. When the leaves of that tree dry up, I will die. A 13-year-old boy with a sickly complexion and straight hair named Dash looked at the Sakura tree with bitter memories. Dash knew he was going to die. He would prefer to do it faster than agonize in this desolate place, but taking his own life was something he didn't want to do. After years of being here, it had become a challenge for him. He wanted to know how far he could live with his body on the verge of collapse. Christmas, New Year, Thanksgiving all the time he had spent in the hospital, and to be honest, he was indifferent to it all. Dash's parents didn't visit him often as they were busy with their jobs, dedicating the little time they had to their healthy siblings. He, on the contrary, was forgotten in the hospital. For many, Dash's personality might seem boring, but none of the fools who could opine knew his situation. The illness tormenting him was called a diapathic pulmonary fibrosis, and theoretically, he should be wearing a mask to help him breathe, but he secretly took it off whenever he could. This incurable and progressive disease affects the lungs. Doctors explained to Dash that in this devastating disorder, healthy lung tissue is gradually replaced by scar tissue, making it difficult for the lungs to function properly. As a result, respiratory capacity decreases over time, causing difficulty in breathing and ultimately leading to respiratory failure. Although treatments can be applied to alleviate some symptoms, there is no definitive cure, making IPF a formidable and terminal disease. Dash believed that one day he would get new lungs, but he was not compatible with any of the available options. Cough. 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 Dash tried to hold his stomach that hurt every time he coughed. The sensation of suffocation and weakness tortured him every day. Living this way was truly madness. A nurse who saw Dash at the window, quickly approached him and notified through a radio. Needs medical attention, possible code blue. Damn lungs, I was born with second hand ones Dash thought, joking about his own misfortunes. All that was left for him was to be optimistic, although he was angry at feeling weak, and seeing others squander things he urgently needed. Dash, try to stabilize your breathing for God's sake, I've told you a thousand times not to take off the breathing mask, do you want to die? The nurse, named Patricia, scolded Dash, who took off the mask every chance he got. With red eyes from coughing so much, Dash glanced at the nurse and muttered, I guess I'm now sure that I can't live without the mask. Am I in the terminal phase? The day will come when you have the chance to have new lungs, so you must stay strong to experience a better life outside these ugly walls. I'll die when the leaves of the sakura tree fall, so I've resigned myself to that. Dash thought as he closed his eyes and focused on catching his breath. The only good thing about all this is that he wouldn't cry over a stupid relationship, wouldn't worry about fitting into society, and would never cry about being beaten by some bullies in high school like in the movies. The only torture was what he saw through the window he saw the seasons change, but his world was suspended on the fragile thread of hope. Dash was not only bitter, but loneliness also intertwined with him with every forced inhalation, while fleeting visitors provided temporary solace that, from experience, were mostly false. When will he die? That's the question Dash asks himself every day when will he finally be able to rest. Perhaps many breathe easily, especially his parents who have tried to forget that they have a sick son to worry about. 
He doesn't blame them, Dash simply blames himself for being unlucky. But the times of silently crying cannot be stopped, he cried every night without stopping, and the worst part was that he didn't know why. Tears simply flowed from his eyes, but he felt nothing but longing. I wanted to know how strong a body could be, I had watched incredible television series where the human body was pushed to its limits time and time again. Breathing deeply and filling the lungs with air was something I had forgotten, my weak lungs had prevented me from doing so for a while. When you feel sick, you appreciate your body, the face becomes indifferent only when you understand that the value of health is all that matters. As you age, you stop caring about who is more handsome than the other, at least in this aspect, Dash had matured. I want to have a girlfriend to protect Amit, in this pitiful state, I couldn't even protect myself. Dash stared at the dark ceiling of his room, and that night, he cried without stopping until he fell asleep. In the end, those were his days over and over again. Patricia, take me to see the Sakura tree since the weather is nice, Dash said while watching the Karate Kid movie, the one made in 2010 that many insisted was Kung Fu and not Karate. Well, the promotion of the movies it was inspired by is nice, and the money earned from it is interesting enough to become that. But once again, these senseless things didn't matter to Dash. At least that way, you'll stop doing silly things for a while, Patricia said as she helped Ash onto a wheelchair, where she had also placed a small oxygen tank. After a long journey, Dash had been taken to the Sakura tree, which was almost without any of its beautiful leaves. As he understood, the Sakura tree, or cherry blossom, holds deep meaning in Japanese culture that Dash had researched after wasting time. And what he had learned is that it represents ephemeral beauty and the transience of life. Cherry blossoms, beautiful but fleeting, symbolize impermanence and the idea that life is beautiful but brief. This symbolism has influenced philosophy and art, reminding of the importance of appreciating each moment, and finding beauty in the transience of existence. The lush blooming of cherry blossoms in spring is also associated with renewal and hope, but Dash no longer has hope. Hope is what I lost a long time ago, Dash murmured as he looked at that beautiful tree, which, from one moment to another, lost more and more leaves with the powerful wind. Dash, who sensed that the end had come, found it increasingly difficult to breathe, even with the mask. His eyes focused on the last leaf of the Sakura tree, and he tried to smile. Ding ding. At that moment, Patricia checked the message she had received, and as Dash's guardian, she quickly said, I told you, they found good lungs for you, Dash, you are compatible. In the end, it's painful to die without anyone who really loves me by my side, that was Dash's last thought as crystal tears streamed down his eyes. At that moment, alongside the fall of the last leaf of the Sakura tree, Dash had died with a slight discomfort. Patricia, who knew that Dash's condition had relapsed, quickly sent him to the emergency room, but no matter how hard they tried to revive him, Dash, who had given up his will to live, did not open his eyes again. But unbeknownst to Dash, this was not his last chance to see life with new eyes. Dash, who claimed he had died, didn't know how much time had passed since he closed his eyes for the last time, but at this point, the one who had declared he was dead, slowly opened his eyes. There was a lot of noise around him, something he noticed instantly. And at the same time, it seemed extremely familiar. Dash, Dash, wake up quickly, the old witch is on her way. A voice whispered in his ear, calling his name. Old witch. Dash's confused and dazed mind began to wonder who the heck that old witch was. And more importantly, he knew him so well that they called him by his name so intimately. The next second, Dash heard a beat that made him lift his head from the desk he was lying on, and looked around with a bewildered gaze. He raised his head even more, opened his eyes wider, and quickly looked around with much more attention. What appeared in front of Dash was a classroom from some school, where a huge blackboard could be seen saying. Studying can take you to a better place, that's how you'll progress in life. In the lower right corner of the blackboard, there was a column of words that said. Today's class schedule. Early reading, Spanish, math, singing, and English. Days until spring. 26, what the hell is this place? Dash, who immediately realized where he was, began to breathe more quickly. The suffocating feeling he felt just before dying began to overwhelm him, he felt short of breath and began to squeeze his hands tightly, as he turned his head from side to side. Anxiety, panic, and all that impression quickly drew the attention of all the students, no more than 11 years old, in the classroom. All those youthful faces entered his field of vision, their slightly pale hands entered his field of vision, and a tingling sensation began to run through his body. Dash. What's happening to you? The girl next to him quickly noticed Dash's abnormality, so she quickly stood up and pushed the desk in front of him. I can't breathe Dash instinctively muttered those words with difficulty. Quick, call the teacher. The girl who quickly unbuttoned Dash's shirt, who was losing consciousness due to the anxiety attack, said. 
Everything will be fine, just breathe, you have to breathe. Dash could see the girl's appearance and was surprised because he didn't know her, but for some strange reason, he felt very close to her. Tap tap. The sound of heels approaching in the distance became more present, and at that moment, a dark-skinned teacher entered only to immediately see the state of the student who was feeling unwell. Dash heel. Exclaimed the teacher who immediately ran to his place. Move aside, everyone step back. Said the teacher named Ava, who looked at how he was being helped and calmly asked, trying to maintain control. Miss Lee, what's happening with Dash? I don't know, he fell asleep after arguing about a silly movie, and after trying to wake him up, he started having trouble breathing. Responded the girl called Devon Lee with tears, thinking it was her fault. Ava understood what was happening and said, Miss Lee, you know your friend better than any other student here, so just try to reassure him. Devon looked at Dash and quickly started stroking his back, then said, Remember that silly argument about whether milk goes before cereal, I can say both are fine. Alva shook her head and said, just try to breathe, focus, and you'll be able to do it. She knew that as long as Dash tried to concentrate on the present moment, recognizing that the anxiety attack is temporary and will pass, he could breathe normally again. Dash, on the other hand, didn't know what was happening, he thought he wouldn't breathe again, and all the new things he could see started to overwhelm him. What kind of joke after death is this? No, he should be hallucinating while Dash thought about that, a hand began to gently stroke his back, and that's when he tried to calm down. Just breathe, Dash, you'll be able to regain tranquility after breathing. Said Professor Ava while holding Dash's hand, which was bathed in sweat. After several minutes, Dash managed to calm down, and after feeling the cold air again in his lungs, he let out a long sigh and lost consciousness. Dash, wake up Dash. Devon looked as Dash had collapsed and panicked. Calm down, Miss Lee, he's just agitated said the teacher, Lee, who immediately saw the nurse approaching and sighed in relief. Is Dash okay? Devon knew that her friend was not in good health due to his fragile body, but he was mostly normal like the other students. Alva looked at Devon and said, relax, he's fine. After confirming that Dash was only asleep, the nurse, with the help of the others, quickly took him to the infirmary for a more thorough checkup. He only had an anxiety attack, he often confuses some body functions like breathing. Yes, he is fine, but it would be better to take him for a checkup to be sure. Dash was deeply asleep, dreaming of a life that was similar to his but very different. He had the same parents, the same face and name, but he had a completely different life than the one he had before he took his last breath. Truth be told, in this life, he didn't have that horrible illness, but he did have a weak body according to the people around him. His best friend, or the one he spent most of his time with, was named Devon Lee. She was the one he shared his worst and best moments with. Dash knew that with her was the only way to feel happy, at least she doesn't lie like many idiots he has encountered throughout his life. The life he spent with his parents may feel a bit turbulent, especially in the way they acted with their family, as they were a bit cold and serene at all times. So, if he was looking for a loving mother, he definitely wouldn't find her at home. But Dash, who knew his parents, could understand it. He never needed his parents' love before because he died alone, and it's not like he suddenly needed that love he never had as a child. When he was younger, or to be precise, during his time between 9 to 12 years old, his mother told him, live without causing trouble to anyone. If the problem is big and you can't handle it, just do what you think is convenient. He never understood those words, he supposed his mother never wanted him to understand. But the reason he couldn't forget those words was that they were the last words he heard from his mother before she visited him once a month at most. To Dash, it seemed ridiculous to feel sorry or pity for his own situation, all he believed was that this is his luck, and he would die that way. Now that he died and woke up in a healthy body, there was no better judgment than his own judgment at that time. Perhaps that's why he now expects nothing from his parents, and the only thing he will be interested in is his own goals. He died at the age of 13, a child who practically spent more than half of his years in a hospital. Bitterness and loneliness never showed up, but just when he died was when he felt alone. It was embarrassing, why didn't I realize that I was actually broken inside? Maybe now he's happy, but he still hides that he's sad. He had thought he was a strong guy, someone who had lived in bitterness and pain all his life. But in the end, he was scared, and now he wished not to die regretting the life he had unfortunately lived. Dash, this time, only this time, didn't want to ask how or why. He had overcome that stage in his life a long time ago, so all he did was thank his luck for living once again. Perhaps some god took pity on his misfortune, and gave him the chance to live again in a life that is his, and emerge from what would happen if his illness had never existed. At least he would appreciate this life more than anyone in the world, he believed. So once he woke up, everything that overwhelmed him would be erased from his body, that was a promise. Isn't he dead, teacher? 
Devin asks with a worried look. Miss Lee, your friend is fine, oh my god, he can't die. He's my only non-idiot friend in that circus of delayed children with dyslexia. Devin Lee murmured as she looked at Dash, who was beginning to open his eyes. He's alive. Am I alive? Dash wondered upon waking up completely. Yes, you're alive, idiot. Devin shouted while hugging Dash tightly. I guess she was worried about her only friend, Dash muttered under his breath. Haha, I have more friends than I appear to have. Besides, since you're the only one who doesn't talk much with others, they prefer to hang out with a guy than talk to those girls who only know how to talk nonsense they hear from their mothers, Devin said, releasing Dash, who immediately looked at the girl in front of him. She was his first friend, so Devin would appreciate this friendship better than anyone in life. She smiled knowing that she had gained a friend, and he said, Well, unfortunately for you, I'm still alive, as if Dash's words were normal. Devin smiled and said, Yes, unfortunately I think at these moments the whole class loves you. The class was cancelled, and it seems there will be no homework for the weekend. That's good, isn't it? In part, it's good, I'm also grateful to you. Devin said as she stood up. Are you leaving already? Do you want me to stay? Devin questioned slightly confused. Not at all, we'll talk later Dash said, familiar with this girl's personality. Yeah, and good luck at the hospital oh I definitely won't go to a hospital again, it's not the time. Dash muttered as he watched his friend leave. You have a good friend Mr. Hale. Dash looked at the nurse and smiled, at least that was the best for him in these confusing moments. Not long after, his parents sent someone to pick him up, and he knew things would get a bit complicated due to the drama he had caused at school. When Dash realized he had a new chance to live a different life, he felt inexplicably happy and calm at the same time. There weren't many things that caught his attention beyond what could be done with the body. That is, he had been bedridden for a long time, and now the air he could breathe was more abundant than he enjoyed, even with an air mask attached to his body. When Dash could feel that he had more strength at 11 than at 13, that's too long before he died. Seeing all those sports competitions, he wanted to do something now that he could. He didn't want to let his greatest treasure, which is now his body, rust without doing anything. After dying in an inexplicable feeling of fear, anguish, and loneliness, Dash wanted to erase those feelings from his heart, and knew that the only way to do it was to be someone better. Mr. Hale, your father requested a complete checkup right after leaving school, said the driver who picked him up as soon as he left school. Dash, who was immersed in his thoughts, shook his head and said, the teacher definitely exaggerated things, it wasn't as dramatic as she mentioned on the call. The last thing I want is to spend the rest of the day in a hospital. I'm fine, and if you don't think I am, let me talk to my father, and I'll handle it. Perhaps it was because Dash's father was someone very serious, at least the one he remembered in his bold life, he knew that things would be understood if a detailed explanation was given. Still, memories with his father were few. He spent most of his time managing the liquor company he owned, a very large one, and the profits were, of course, unthinkable. But in general, that company kept him far away from the family, and now that he thinks about it, it's natural. Dash now wishes more than ever to train his body, he wanted to see how far he could go, and for that, he needed to face his father. Usually, to achieve this, it's just a call to his father, and the only way to contact him is for his employees to call him. Mr. Hale, I talked to your son, and he said everything is fine. I insisted on taking him to the hospital, but he refuses and instead requested to talk to you, there was a slight silence after that, but a minute later, there was a response. Put me in touch with him. Here you go Dash nodded and received the cell phone, then, he put it to his ear and spoke, Father, it's Dash, give me a valid reason not to consider what you're doing as an immature tantrum. You know my time is limited, and I just postponed a meeting for 10 minutes because of you. Yes, that was his father that he very well remembered. Maybe it was because of the time, but then Dash could swear that his father expected him to die to stop causing trouble to the family. It often sounds a bit harsh, but that's the reality. Many people mention that money matters, and they're right, but the rich sometimes have the most bitter life. Only those who have been through hell can say that every life has its difficulties, and it's no different to cry on a half million dollar bed than in a family where people love each other unconditionally. After arranging his plans, Dash said, it was just an anxiety attack. I fell asleep and dreamed that I was kicked in front of Devon. It was embarrassing, so from now on, I want to start training my body. To be honest, it would be fun if I could learn some martial art like karate or kung fu. The moment Dash said that, there was a long silence, and he thought he had made a mistake in giving such a cheap excuse not to go to a hospital. Truth be told, he didn't want to set foot in a hospital in his life if possible. If you can't withstand the words you said, you will be punished. If the coach says you are incapacitated with some quality related to what happened at school, then you will also be punished. 
Do you understand what I'm telling you? I understand, father, I won't retract my words, Dash immediately hung up the call, passed the cell phone to the driver, and sighed. In a large building, Frederick Hale looked at the call that had been hung up by his son and frowned slightly. The call ends when the one you called hangs up, not the other way around. It seems you pushed his son into a somewhat tough decision by mentioning the meeting. Do you think he's lying? John, who is Frederick's secretary, asked. My son doesn't lie, but it did catch me off guard with the training. Frederick was happy yet angry that his son disappointingly gave up on the training, which doctors claimed was precisely what he needed to improve his weak-born body's condition. Did you contact any martial arts masters? No, I'll send Mr. Kim, he mentioned in his resume that he learned Chinese martial arts, so while he trains my son, everything might be fine. Frederick thought that, with luck, something would be gained from this. We people are often prey in society's food chain, and the last thing he wants is to see his son humiliated by inept children. At the Hale residence, Dash got out of the car that picked him up, and only one word escaped his mouth. Shit. The house he used to live in increased by 10. What kind of further changes had there been in his life that seemed the same but different? He had the same parents, obviously, Devon Lee didn't know her in his previous life, but that was understandable since he never attended school. Still, there were subtle details that changed overnight. The moment Dash walked toward the house, there were no noticeable changes in his face, but his thoughts were in chaos. Generally, life had treated him so badly that very few things surprised him. But when he believed everything would be the same as in his previous life, but without that horrible disease, he was completely wrong. Upon entering the house, as expected, there was no one except some workers helping in the garden or cleaning the house. His mother, as usual, should be with his father, so he immediately walked to his room. How did he remember it? Intuition. He walked slowly, and when he saw the door to a room, he immediately knew it was his, so upon entering, he was not mistaken. First, I'll take off these clothes and put on something more comfortable, Dash came to this conclusion, so he quickly changed, left the clothes he had worn before in a special basket, and then lay down on the bed. Bip bip. But at that moment, his cell phone vibrated, and seeing that it was a message from Devon Lee saying, were you able to avoid going to the hell they call the hospital? Luckily, I did. I'll stop watching only those stupid movies you recommend about serial killers, Dash replied with a smile on his face. Having a friend, even if it's a girl, was what Dash always longed for. Memories with Devon Lee were very clear, and although they prefer enemies, their friendship is sincere between them. Devon Lee. I told you to watch those movies together. It's a shame your father will punish you by taking away access to the home theater, after failing the Spanish exams idiot. I told you to quit those stupid video games, that not only suck the life out of you, but also make you more foolish. Dash smiled and replied, being a YouTuber is the highlight now. Maybe your girl who spends her time reading books and wasting time arguing, but that doesn't rule out other things. Keep an open mind. Devon Lee. Give me more reasons not to help you with things you don't know anyway, if something comes up, see you this weekend. That if something comes up, see you this weekend for Dash is like saying, don't bother me, I'll read a marathon of an unknown writer talking about some idiotic topic that Devon feels curious about. Her strict rule of adapting to any situation after losing it something is really hard to deal with. I'll spend my time locked up playing. Dash said jokingly, and just as he was about to turn off his cell phone, he received a new message. Now what? I remember I don't have another friend murmured Dash, but when he saw the message, he frowned. Dree Parker. I'm going to China, bro. This is freaking crazy. They're going to feed me cats, for the love of all heavens, I don't want to leave Detroit. Why does this sound familiar? Dash thought as a deja vu crossed his somewhat muddled memories. Dree Parker Dree Dree Parker where do I know that name from? Dash couldn't help but feel like there was a memory on the tip of his mind, but he couldn't pinpoint what it was familiar to. He remembered that before dying, he liked watching some movies about karate, boxing, or any kind of contact sport that required physical prowess and effort. But he assumed that this familiarity was just a coincidence. Surely, the dream he had just remembered was a guy from some martial arts movie, right? Just to check something Dash started typing a message to Dree and asked, why China? Usually, Dash didn't talk much with people because he barely had the energy to survive, so he found it challenging to spend it on empty words. But now, he wanted to do all those things he had never done before. Dree Parker. My mother was transferred to a very good position supposedly, but it's in China. It's crazy. I don't speak Chinese, all my friends are here, so I don't really know how to process this bomb of anxiety and terror. Damn. Dash shouted as he jumped off the bed and began pacing back and forth, as if he still couldn't believe what he was thinking. 
Come on, the idea of thinking that he had come back to life in the same body, but with slight changes he could accept, but believing he was in some karate movie plot right now was blowing his mind. Send me your address, I'll send you a farewell gift. Dash said just to further confirm his suspicions. Are you crazy? I'm going to China, how can you send me a gift without asking something more? Dash thought about it, and it was true, but he couldn't avoid a decision from a family agenda. Besides, if he's in a slightly different world, he would want to at least enjoy it more. There wasn't much difference from a normal world, but what made his blood boil was that he could belong to this world of martial arts, and meet different people. They might kick his ass, but the important thing is that he would at least be trying something that until recently he considered just a movie. Just send me your address, if life treats you badly in China, I'll definitely visit you. Dash said as he put his cell phone aside. This was definitely madness, but he liked the excitement he was feeling. In other words, I might even participate in that tournament that will be held later in China, I have to try even if they kick my ass. When Dash came to this resolution, he descended from his room to the first floor, and, after taking some water, started running around his house like a crazy maniac. Nowadays, everyone strives to become protagonists of a story full of roses, where their desire is to get the most beautiful girlfriend or fulfill their most coveted fantasies. But I'm not like that. All I want is to show all those damn idiots how far the human body can go. Dash smiled in a somewhat curious way. His smile, instead of something showing his happiness, was smiling in a sinister way, as if he wanted to kill someone. And just at that moment, he realized for the first time what it meant to be tired. Hoo <laughs> what's happening to my body? I can't believe I got tired just with this, it makes no sense. Dash, on the second lap, was half dead tired. His body started to sweat, and he felt a burning not only in his feet, but also in his chest. The cold air entered his lungs and immediately rushed out hastily, so after realizing that he had run out of resistance, he began wheezing as if he had run more than 10 kilometers without stopping. Come on, damn it. Yes, I have to supervise the decisions our son makes no, that bet you made with him is reckless because he might have a problem. Dash's friend's mother called me and asked about his condition, I only mentioned that they were checking on him right now, so imagine my surprise when you tell me he's not in a hospital. A beautiful woman in her 30s was entering the Hale mansion, and the moment she was about to head to where Dash was, she was left speechless. Damn. Elena Hale was petrified to see Dash running his 10th lap, and she could swear that if he did one more, he would faint. Mrs. Elena, young master, doesn't stop, we told him many times that he should stop since running so much could hurt him, a worker approached Elena, and quickly explained what Dash was doing. I'll take care of it. Elena hung up the call without saying goodbye to Frederick and walked towards Dash, who could barely bear his soul. The only hard day was yesterday, it's worth it to be a winner Dash, who had red eyes due to pain, was crying, not from the pain, not at all, but from the fact that he could run. Shit, I can run. Dash Hale, stop this instant. Elena shouted urgently as she saw her son acting crazy. One more turn now. Hey in the living room, Dash looked nervously at his mother who looked much scarier than usual. Luckily she was the same as her in her past life, so there was nothing to worry about in terms of familiarity. Then why did you refuse to go to the doctor and instead run around the house like a madman? Elena asked without any hint of emotions on her face. She was very worried about her wonderful son, but she couldn't show it, because if she did that Dash wouldn't take her seriously. That's just because he wanted to run Dash muttered a little overwhelmed, his mother, although she rarely visited him in the hospital, never showed him contempt. Do not lie to me. Oh. Of course, his mother, although she has a thin appearance, is a very scary woman that even his father Frederick respects. Many are carried away by her beautiful black hair, captivating blue eyes and enviable appearance, but she is a very strict woman. With this in mind, Dash knew there wasn't much reason for an 11-year-old to be running around the house like a madman. So he thought of a clever answer, he came up with a very accurate one in his opinion. Well, mother, you see my online friend named Dree Parker is going to China. He has seen in the movies that all Chinese, even grandparents know martial arts. So I promised him that I would protect him if some idiot messes with him, but for that I need to be strong, so I asked my father to give me the opportunity to train to be strong. After saying that, Dash smiled cleverly knowing that there were no flaws in his logic. But ignoring the fact that his mother could see all the abnormality of his personality, she wouldn't stop at that. Then give me your cell phone. Elena said as she extended her hand towards her son who had frozen. Mother, you are asking for the most private thing in my life, Dash murmured, avoiding his mother's gaze, which made him more suspicious. Elena smiled, then said. Well, if you want me to believe you and agree to let you learn things that can hurt you, you must give me a good reason, and a lie is unacceptable. 
Well, then here Dash gave the cell phone to his mother and waited on the side full of nervousness. He hoped that there wasn't any pornography in any of his chats like any curious teenager. As Elena read the chat between her son and the boy named Dre, she nodded and said, I'm going to ignore the fact that you asked your father to train martial arts, after receiving the message from your friend who is leaving for China. I will prepare a good gift for him and his mother. Dash felt a shiver run down his spine and nodded robotically, wanting to deceive his mother was something very complicated that even he didn't manage successfully. But at least he believed half of the story, that was enough. Well, I'm going to take a shower mom Dash said as he ran towards his room. Remember not to train until your father introduces you to the trainer, you could get hurt. Elena said with a smile. Yes mom. Dash responded, more excited than usual. After going up the stairs, Elena's smile faded and she said. I want you to investigate if my son is being bullied, if you find something, don't forget to tell me. Yes ma'am. Behind Elena young woman quickly retreated while she made some calls. Elena knew very well that her son went to a public school, because Devin Lee was a good friend of his, and her family subtly rejected the proposal to send her to a private school with her son, so because of that it had to be more careful that no idiot child wants to go overboard with the things he treasures. Just in case, the coach should be tougher. Pain is the fruit of growth, only if you crush those who are your enemies will you win in life. Elena after that called Frederick to clarify some things. Dash felt like every inch of his body was screaming in pain, and even after taking a cold shower, the pain persisted. It seemed like the idea of running like a wild maniac wasn't the best, but he couldn't help it, as soon as he started running, he felt happy. I'm going to be the dragon warrior Dash murmured as he slept deeply in his home's living room. What he had felt was something very few had experienced, but he had no regrets, considering he was only 11 years old, giving him at least a year's difference with his friend Dre, who participated in an impressive kung fu tournament. The moment Dash opened his eyes, he was met with a man with a dominating aura, staring at him without blinking. Frederick, Dash's dad, whom he had few memories of, was sitting in front of him. You're awake. Dash started without understanding his father for some time, only to realize eventually that his behavior was out of place, so he sat up. Hello, father, you're back early. Frederick sat comfortably and said, well, your mother made a fuss about your inappropriate behavior, so she asked me, is practicing martial arts a hobby, or is someone bothering you at school? Once again, Dash returned to the beginning, where he had to come up with a more and more ingenious excuse to train at an early age. But this time, he was in front of his father, and he knew that if he were honest, he would understand perfectly. So Dash said, Well, father I heard from my friend that in higher grade schools, delinquency is much more common, so I'd rather not be the guinea pig for some bully who enjoys bothering others. Aren't your mother and I enough to keep you safe? Frederick was very interested in where his son was going with all this explanation. In truth, he was very impressed with the changes Dash was undergoing, so he wanted to test him. Dash smiled ingeniously and replied, Even so, you won't always be by my side, I must fight my own battles besides, now that one of my online friends is going to China, I want more than ever to learn self-defense. Frederick nodded slightly, looked at his cell phone, and said, Well, son, you'll have to set aside your video games to learn some martial arts, are you sure about this? I want to be strong, father, Dash replied with sweaty hands, he was nervous, but really wanted to give it a try. And you will be, little Dash replied a slightly hoarse voice behind him. By the time Dash turned to see who it was, Frederick stood up, and after greeting the Asian looking man, he said, Son, meet Mr. Kim, he's one of my bodyguards, and will be the one to teach you martial arts. Is this a hidden master? Dash wondered, looking at the elderly Asian man very excitedly. Mr. Kim smiled and said, Your father told me that his son wanted to learn martial arts, I know a bit of kung fu, so I can teach it to you however, you must know that martial arts are not a game, but something that must be taken very seriously. I understand that Mr. Kim. I'm excited to learn, Dash said as he bowed to Mr. Kim. Oh, there's really no need for that now. Classes start tomorrow, so since it's the weekend, we'll begin at 7 in the morning, Mr. Kim said, then bid farewell to Frederick and left. Dash looked suspiciously at his father but didn't say anything, he knew the more effort he put in, the more he would learn. Plus, he was excited to see if he had the chance to enter the tournament that Dre would participate in later. After dinner, Dash was in front of his computer, on a call with Devin Lee, who seemed to be talking about the book she had stopped reading, because every paragraph was too sensationalist. It's complete garbage, I should find that author and shove the book in his face for selling such trash, Devin Lee said, after venting his anger to Dash, who was falling asleep. Well, you're partly to blame for not looking for a review of the book you're buying, Dash murmured as he set the alarm for 6.40 in the morning. 
It was a damn gift from my uncle. He probably didn't even read the book he bought before giving it to me. Devin Lee sighed with dismay and asked, So, you're saying you want to learn martial arts now? Dash smiled and said, I'd call it a lifestyle yeah. You can also say you'll be the dragon warrior. How did you know? Dash, who was falling asleep, raised his voice. Don't shout at me. Wait, just to clarify, you're not doing all this because we watched Kung Fu Panda a few days ago, right? Devin Lee asked with a slightly unnatural voice. Dash thought about it for a moment and said, Of course not, I'm serious about this. Yeah, well, whatever go to sleep, I don't want to have to hang up when I start hearing your snores, that would really put me in a bad mood. Devin Lee had finished venting to Dash, so she just wanted to sleep to rest from this exhausting day. Yeah, good night. Dash hung up the call and lay down, closed his eyes, and fell into a deep sleep with a broad smile on his face. Beep beep. This wasn't a dream, damn it, I feel so alive Dash woke up, and the first thing he did was celebrate that this wouldn't be a dream. This was the first time he woke up thanks to an alarm, and he could say he hated it. As he walked to the bathroom, the first thing he did was brush his teeth, and after finishing his other necessities, he descended the stairs. When he left the house, he saw a man, and that was Mr. Kim, who from today would teach him martial arts. You managed to wake up, my congratulations, Mr. Hale, said Mr. Kim with slight approval. Since alarms exist, this isn't much. Dash murmured as he stood firm in front of Mr. Kim, who was looking at him seriously. Mr. Kim nodded and said, Your father gave me the green light to teach you properly, so I hope you can withstand the training. It won't be easy, but you will learn what you want as quickly as possible. I'm ready, sir. Shouted Dash with his chest puffed up. He would definitely improve and find out if he had talent or if he needed to exert more effort than others. Very well, first of all, I will teach you the principles of the martial art I will impart, and that is Kung Fu first, respect for oneself, for others, and for the tradition of Kung Fu. Wow, he acts like a true master Dash murmured absent-mindedly, wanting to go straight to action. But Mr. Kim had assumed the role of a teacher and said, Second, perseverance, which you will implement in constant practice and patience, since they are fundamental to mastering the art. Yes sir, shouted Dash, who, although it didn't seem like it, was a sponge absorbing everything he was being taught. You must have control of the mind, body, and emotions, since it is essential for the development of true kung fu, that would be the third, said Mr. Kim, looking at Dash with absolute tranquility. Having known a bit about kung fu, Dash already knew a lot, and the next thing Mr. Kim mentioned was efficiency. According to Mr. Kim, kung fu focuses on the efficient use of the body, and the minimization of unnecessary effort. Having flexibility not only physically but mentally, as if he thought something was merely ridiculous, he wouldn't pay attention to anything he wanted to learn. This long explanation ended with balance and harmony, something Dash didn't need because the last thing he wanted was to be harmonious with idiots. In fact Mr. Kim, I've been searching on the internet, and there are many tournaments in China held every year. The most exclusive ones are every four years, so I would like not to be harmonious but aggressive. Mr. Kim nodded without saying a word to Dash's request, who seemed very excited. This was strange because if he were truly a master clinging to traditions, he should have scolded him. But by not doing this, he gave Dash more reasons to take the hard path of this training. Remember, Dash, the most important thing is that Kung Fu is not used to harm, but to protect the integrity of each person, and keep safe those who matter to you. Mr. Kim was a bit worried about this, but for some reason, he didn't want to be harsh with a child who was just starting, and who might possibly give up halfway. I understand sir. Dash said with a serious look. At this moment, all he wanted to feel was his body, and that he could be stronger. If time passed without doing that, the torture would be too much because it would show all that desire to run he had before. And finally, call me Shifu, Mr. Kim said with an expectant look. Wasn't it sensei? Dash asked, slightly confused. This is not karate, this is kung fu. Dash frowned and said, let me see if I understand, you're Korean teaching me Chinese kung fu, but I can't call you sensei, because that's Japanese. At this point, Dash wondered, what the hell is the difference if everything is mixed up like a vegan salad? It doesn't matter, let's start with the warm up Mr. Kim put on his hoodie, and then he started jogging. Dash, who was taken by surprise, did the same and followed Shifu Kim. Supposedly, this was the warm up, but for him, running for 5 minutes was a living hell. All this torture for Dash was a blessing, every time he ran or breathed was truly a miracle for him. That's why he didn't give up, he followed the training to the letter and didn't fail at anything. According to Mr. Kim, he had to improve his physical condition, flexibility, balance, and leg training. They would focus on these in the first few months, and after that, they would move on to concentration, posture, alignment, agility, and coordination. But Dash would make sure that in those months, he could learn all that on his own. 
Not only that, but he would double his efforts just to feel that it had been worth it. Similarly, he knew he wouldn't die from doing exercises like these. Besides, he was aware that he should first focus on improving the strength, endurance, and condition of his body, before asking about real kung fu. On Sunday night, two days after a long training session, Frederick, along with his wife Elena, heard a report on their son's training. Did he pass your test? Elena asked, still confused. She had made sure to tell Kim to be tough on her son, so that he would abandon the idea of learning contact doctrines. Ma'am, your son is a beast who doesn't give up even if he can't take it anymore. It seems he won't give up even if the training increases, so it seems your son is very serious about wanting to learn. Mr. Kim understood Elena's concerns, but he still had to be clear with the results. Proud of his son's discipline, Frederick told Elena, it's better for him to train outdoors than spend the whole day on those video games, surely, all this will do him good. Elena nodded and said, it seems to be the case, from what I heard, he's not bothered at school, so he'll be fine then. So, Mr. Kim, I would appreciate it if you continue training our son without considering him someone important he is your student, teach him properly. Yes Mr. Hale, I bid you farewell. Mr. Kim smiled slightly and went home. No one understood why an 11 year old works so hard on something he shouldn't like, but only Dash knows that he does all this for himself. He wanted to know how far he could push the limits of his body. He wouldn't waste this new opportunity, that would be unacceptable. I don't feel alive, Devin Dash murmured as he leaned on his desk. The class couldn't stop looking at him from time to time, as if they feared he might go crazy due to the lack of air. Devin Lee looked at Dash's appearance and was left speechless. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. She never thought that the guy who played video games every day had now become someone who trained his body as if there were no tomorrow. Hey, you know that on weekends, you can join me in the training, it would be very comforting not to suffer alone. If we're two, the spirit is shared, Dash said while handing a big chocolate to his friend. Devin looked at the chocolate and Dash's suffering expression, so she said, if I do what you do every day, the remaining energy I have to come to this reform school would be depleted. During the holidays, I could train with you every day. Are you reading another saga of books with more letters than days lived? Dash didn't believe Devin, normally, they did everything together, and when one refused, it meant they were wasting time on some of their personal interests. Devin, who heard this, smiled, reached into her bag, and pulled out a mint ointment, saying, You complained yesterday on the call, so I made sure to buy this ointment from an old man. He says it has many chemicals, so just apply a little on the muscles that hurt. Wow, I didn't think you were so considerate Dash took the mysterious looking ointment and smiled, he would definitely use it. We've got each other's backs. When will you learn to kick and stuff? Dash thought about this, and indeed, he wasn't ready yet. He had to work on his flexibility and endurance, so he said, I'm working on coordinating my body, I'll start kicking very soon. Hey, you two, can you be quiet for a bit? I'm trying to sleep, said a somewhat stocky guy with an annoyed look. You sleep at home, genius, unless you don't have one, Devin responded, dismissing the guy named Maycall, who was staring at Dash. I didn't ask for your damn opinion. Is she the only one who stands up for you? Maycall didn't fight with women, so he looked at Dash as if he was the one responsible for Devin. Dash, who had gone unnoticed for a long time, caught attention when he experienced that anxiety incident. So, since he knew guys like Maycall very well, he nodded slightly. You know, I have a very weak body, and Devin, who is my guardian warrior, takes care of protecting me at school. Do you not have any girl to protect you? Dash asked absent-mindedly. Devin smiled seeing how Maycall was left speechless. Dash was always the one to avoid problems, but he also didn't let himself be intimidated by such silly games. Pathetic, at least find a pretty girl a Maycall muttered as he left the classroom. This homeless bastard. Devin grabbed the book Dash had told her about with sensationalist content, and was about to throw it at Maycall, when a hand stopped her. Don't you remember? I protect you from idiots like him, and you protect me from crazy ones. Dash took the book and stood up, walked to the classroom door, and smiled in a somewhat questionable way. Damn, I hope he doesn't do something crazy. Devin murmured, unable to contain her curiosity, she stood up and followed Dash, who had entered the boys' bathroom. Damn school, there were only idiots to Ash, who wanted to avoid any hint of trouble, said, Hey, Maycall, I really don't want to have problems, but you insulted my friend. As long as you apologize to her, I can forget all this, and we can be friends again. As if hearing something irrational, Maycall replied, Wait, are you here because of what I said about your ugly girlfriend? She was the one who got in my face, I should have given her a beating for what she said, but she got lucky for being a girl. Dash, who heard this, didn't know how to fake his anger. Devin was someone special to him, so he wouldn't allow any stupid kid to bother her. 
As his father had said one day, avoid problems and eliminate them from the root. Well, first of all, no one insults my friend. Dash said, tightening his grip on the book in his hand, and forcefully hitting Maycall's forehead. Bam. Secondly, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Dash shouted, taking advantage of Maycall being stunned. Bam. 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 Dash, are you crazy? Devin shouted, entering the boy's bathroom upon hearing the screams of pain. When she saw Dash hitting Maycall with the book, she quickly stopped him. But he's a bully. Aren't we supposed to avoid them messing with us? Dash looked at Devin with confusion. Wasn't Maycall one of those kids who abused their strength and beat up others? Devin looked at Maycall and said, He's an idiot, but I don't think he's one of those. Forget it, let's go back, classes are about to start. Yeah, Dash murmured, a bit confused. Now that he thought about it, he felt a little guilty because, in a way, no one was at fault here. I'm sorry Maycall. I'll leave chocolate in your backpack Dash, who had never fought before, felt a little bad. He just wanted to prevent someone from messing with him because he knew perfectly well the stereotypes of bullies, but there was no need to become one to achieve that. On the other hand, Devin was very happy, although she hid it well since fights within the school were severely condemned, and she didn't want Dash to be expelled for a few days due to a pointless argument. Hey Dash, I'll exercise with you on weekends, Devin said as she returned to the classroom. That's fantastic. I'll introduce you to Mr. Kim when we meet, Dash said, much more excited. Two months later. Have you packed everything, Dree? Yes, mom, everything's ready, Dree said, looking at the empty house that used to be his. Knock knock. Knock knock. I'm coming. Said a woman with wavy hair, wondering who was looking for them at this time, as she had settled all the commitments before moving to China. Mrs. Parker, are you Mrs. Sherry Parker? Asked a man who came to deliver a package. Yes, that's me, Sherry murmured a bit confused. You have a package, this is originally for your son, but you can receive it, said the delivery man, asking only for a signature. Who is it, mom? Dree came to the door to see who had knocked. Dree, do you have any doubts about a package for you? Sherry wanted to deny this type of package. A package for me? I didn't really expect Dash to send me anything. Dree was surprised that what he considered a joke was actually something Dash took seriously. Dash. Dree nodded and said, he's my friend, mom. He's an amazing person. Every day, Dash asked himself the same question. Am I alive? It was inevitable for Dash to ask himself that question every day due to how unreasonable his new life was. It's not like he was complaining, what he really meant was that everything was too incredible to process in just a few days. In less than a month, Dash, besides training, did nothing but spend time very slowly and accept that it was a new opportunity for him. To be honest, this was his reward, so he believed he should move forward, no matter what. Did you really hit him on the forehead? Asked Devin Lee, looking at the boy named Maycall with a bandaged nose. Yes, that book I took didn't have a hard cover, so it's impossible for his nose to be broken just from those little hits. He promised himself not to feel guilty for hitting a kid his age. As far as he knew, he was only a few years mentally older than most people, which wasn't really scandalous. He had seen many news stories about bullies beating up kids. He also remembered what poor Dree went through in China, so he believed he was involved in a similar plot of events. He just wanted to cut off those annoying problems with a few punches. Do you think chocolate fixes that? Devin Lee looked at Dash as if she hadn't heard those words, but her expression alone said. How the hell does chocolate fix a broken nose? It's not that she felt sorry for Maycall, life often gives many people some blows, so what happened to Dash is just one more lesson. In real life, if he had said those words, he would probably have a significantly broken nose, at least with the nose, he could simply see it as a reminder not to feel special around dozens of people. The problem is that this could escalate to somewhat uncontrollable levels. From what she heard, Mikal has an older brother in higher grades. Don't worry, let's go watch that martial arts movie you mentioned. Dash changed his mind in an instant and looked at Devin, who had offered to watch a movie after school. Devin Lee also forgot about Maycall and nodded, you should at least know how to interpret some moves from the movies. You mentioned that you're starting to train your body to unleash those punches, so it's not a bad idea to watch martial arts movies. Do you think I'm good enough to copy moves made with cables and stuff? It would feel natural if you train martial arts, just direct your kicks towards the target's head just like they do and hit them hard. Dash remembered Mr. Han's training method for Dree in the movie. Although he did it three hours before going to bed, he hadn't noticed a very big difference other than gaining muscles. Also, eating was one of the things he had been doing very quickly, and only thanks to that, his previously slender body started to gain muscle mass very quickly, by the way. After the school day, Dash had communicated with the person responsible for taking him home that he would go with Devin, and he didn't pick him up this time. 
This was common, he spent a lot of time at Devon's house, and vice versa since they were very close friends. But just as they were about to take the bus, May call with a group of boys appeared at the school gate, and just in case the occasion called for it, Dash took the crumpled book he had used a few days ago, with the guy with the broken nose. Don't you remember my warning, May call. Dash, who didn't want to get involved in more fights now that he thought about it, tried to resolve this with dialogue. May call it to Dash with a slight grudge and said, You hit me with a book, Dash, you're a coward. Now we must fight fair and square, and for that, my older brother will fight for me. Dash was about to deny it, and formed a friendly smile, but at that moment, Devin beside him said, The coward is you for calling your brother. No matter, Dash will kick his ass in front of you. Can't you see there are four of them? Dash whispered, looking at his friend with an urgent look. He didn't mind fighting, but he wasn't stupid. He didn't know any kind of movement to attack, but if he dared to fight one-on-one -on -one fairly, these kids had no pride, and most likely, they would all jump on him as soon as they had the chance. This meant that he screwed himself a lot if he fought, he could live after this, but the policy he would receive today would be historic on his good dragon warrior resume. But Devon didn't care about these stupidities. She rolled up the sleeves of her hoodie and said, if the one with the broken nose intervenes, I'll handle it. Just give me the book and fight calmly. I may call Devon, I'm sitting right behind you, may call muttered a little offended. Yeah, whatever, on this side, there's an alley where almost no one passes. We can go there, Devon said, taking Dash's arm very excitedly. Dash, on the other hand, was overwhelmed. He hadn't remembered the kind of girl Devon was, and he regretted it a bit. But truth be told, he wasn't afraid, the only thing he feared was that his reputation would be tarnished after being an invincible fighter. I assure you guys, no one will come out unscathed from this. Dash looked around the alley and put Devon behind him to prevent her from getting involved, this is his fight after all. Yeah. He seemed very confident, that's what you should have thought when you hit my brother from behind, said the tallest guy in the group before. Come on, buddy, I gave your brother a chocolate after the beating I gave him anyway, I guess he's stronger now, so there's no reason to be mad. As he said this, Dash surveyed the terrain and remembered the recommendations a war veteran gave him in the hospital in his previous life. What he knew was that if the fight is inevitable and they outnumber him, he should go for the biggest one and hit him so hard that he doesn't wake up from the nap. Taking off his sweatshirt, Dash left it on the ground next to his backpack, and raised his fists toward the bigger guy. I'll take advantage of this lesson, my first fight, so I'm excited. Dash handed his cell phone to Devon and said, Record this, Devon, we must preserve the memory. Oh, you have a point. Devon took Dash's phone and began recording what was about to happen. But at that moment, Dash, who had focused on the fight, saw the bigger guy moving towards him frantically with raised fists. Dash felt his heart beating strongly, and adrenaline filled his body with a euphoric sensation. Although he wasn't very sure about fighting, the strange feeling he had made him change his mind. Dodging the first punch heading for his face, Dash discovered that the guy who wanted to hit him was too slow and brutish. So, he returned a punch right on the chin, and it was so hard that he felt his knuckles burning with pain. Pump. Oh. The enormous guy fell backward, and just as he tried to get up, he found that there was no strength in his legs, as if every function of his body had been disconnected. Did you see that, Devin? I just kicked this idiot's ass. Haha, <laughs> that felt good. Dash turned to his friend who was recording, but when he looked at her, she shouted, Idiot, don't get distracted. Pum. Dash, who had turned around to see if Devin had recorded that, felt a punch right under his eye and other hits on his chest. Who the hell is hitting me from behind? Dash turned very angry and started fighting like a brute against two guys roughly his height who had intervened in the fight. Damn idiots, you'll taste the flavor of sensationalist content. Devin shouted as she threw the thick crumpled book. Hum. Mikal, who wanted to intervene when he saw Dash being attacked by two of his brother's friends but thought that would be abusive, restrained himself. However, at that moment, a red book appeared in his field of view and hit him right on the nose. Hum. Dash, who had taken more hits than he could count, broke free from the grip of the two idiots who attacked him from behind, thanks to Devon. He managed to land a few more blows before an adult shout stopped them. Hey, stop right now, kids. Damn it, let's go, Dash. Devon kicked Mikal in the groin once again, leaving him holding his nose and crying, and then ran to grab their things. With a burning face, Dash clenched his teeth and said, You've just met the dragon warrior and the mantis, who is my partner. Don't mess with us next week, or we'll mess you up just like today. As Dash assessed the situation, he saw the four boys writhing in pain on the ground, and realized things had gotten a little out of control. It meant he couldn't keep the fight under control due to the superior number of opponents, and now his nose was bleeding a bit, but he didn't care, he needed to run. Let's be friends from now on. 
Dash shouted, waving his hand, and followed Devin down the alley. That's how their first fight unfolded, similar to a baptism if you think about it. Are we still running? Dash, behind Devin, saw her running toward a crowded street, and thought it was enough. Devin stopped, struggled to catch her breath, and said, Did you see how we messed them up? Just when one was trying to poke your eyes, I kicked him in the balls, ha ha ha. Yeah Dash remembered how Devin, from behind, started throwing punches just when he was taking a beating. He swore he took most of them but didn't say anything. Looking at the ice cream shop, Dash smiled and said, Come on, today we'll eat that giant ice cream together. Aren't we going home? Let's eat ice cream first. I think I need something cold on my eye, or it will swell. Shortly after, Dash bought an ice cream with more than 30 flavors. Honestly, for two people, it was just what they needed as a reward, so he thought it wasn't that bad. While eating the ice cream, he thought that maybe getting involved in fights wasn't right, but he felt happy because he had never been able to fight even with a mosquito before. The weakness he felt back then made it impossible for him to step back, and just when he wanted to stop the fight, he felt angry taking those hits. All that pent-up fury in his chest came out in this fight, but the important thing is that he knew how to control himself, and things didn't escalate. Oh my god, Dash, your left eye is turning purple. Devin, who was focused on the ice cream, exclaimed in surprise at Dash, who was enjoying a fruit drink. Does it look that bad? It doesn't look bad, but your parents will ask about it. What do we do? Dash thought silently. These wounds were certainly trophies of war, but he would obviously be in trouble if his parents found out he had been in a fight. Let's say we fought with a flock of ducks. I read on the internet that ducks can be very violent when you touch their tail. Better not tell them anything. I have makeup at home, so I think you can hide the wounds on your face for a while before they disappear. Devin found a smarter solution to Dash's nonsense. Then let's not worry. Aren't you hurt? Dash looked at Devin, who was in perfect condition, and felt a little resentful. Even though he would have been angry if someone hit her, taking all the damage felt unfair, knowing that she also fought. Devin lifted her foot and said, just my foot hurts. Kicking so many times and with that force, I think it damaged a nerve. At this point, Dash regretted asking. He shook his head and said, since you like kicking, you should train with me. It would be less boring if you were there. Devin thought about it and nodded, alright, I think next time I'll kick better. When Devin agreed, Dash and she returned home for her to put makeup on the wound on his face. After watching a movie, Dash never thought the hits he took would hurt, but after 5 hours from the fight, he felt pain in many parts of his body that weren't hit. When his mother picked him up, Dash said goodbye to Devin and got into the car. Do you think I'm a taxi to follow behind? Elena looked at her son, who had sat in the back seat, and pointed to the empty front seat. I thought you pick up dad Dash didn't want to be near his mother, because she was so perceptive that she might notice something. It's not that he feared being scolded, but because, being just a kid, he could receive severe punishments that would ruin his plans to participate in the Kung Fu tournament in China. He didn't want the already slim chances of going there to become impossible for him. Elena, who noticed her son's silence, looked at him closely. She sensed a slight scent of perfume in the air and frowned. Closing the car windows, she felt the smell even stronger, so she asked, Son, is there something you're doing behind my back? What? No, nothing at all. Dash was alarmed and denied everything. Elena, with other thoughts in mind, said, You and Devin are still young, so you shouldn't do something foolish. Your father should have this conversation with you, but I warn you, you and Devin should wait until your bodies develop. Huh? Dash was stunned. What kind of conversation detour is this? Some silly kissing is okay, but nothing beyond that. Oh, that, don't worry Dash understood what his mother meant. The smell of makeup on his face wasn't very strong, but his mother had a sensitive nose, so she noticed. At this point, he didn't know whether to be angry or relieved at this misunderstanding. He was indifferent because he wasn't discovered, but it's a bit worrisome that his father might think of those hormonal teenage things. At his age, Dash hadn't reached that stage yet. All he cared about was becoming the dragon warrior, and he would definitely achieve it. Beep beep. Dash checked his cell phone and saw it was from Devin. Devin Lee. Did your mother find out? Dash sighed and replied, no, everything is out of orbit. Don't worry, she doesn't know anything. Elena, who averted her gaze to her son's cell phone, could read some messages and shook her head. She hoped not to have a grandchild at a young age. She should talk to Frederick and let him handle the education of their son, who was reaching the age of getting interested in a girlfriend. What a headache. The second month after learning that Dre would be heading to China, Dash felt even more pressure, so he trained much harder than he had been doing. Come on, 10 more push-ups. Mr. Kim said, looking at the sweaty Dash who was breathing heavily. 
Devin Lee, who watched her friend suffer, smiled and said, If you complain so much, it's because you can't handle this simple training. We should just quit and focus on finishing watching the movies. Do you know I've been training for two hours longer than you? Dash asked, looking at Devin as if she were his enemy in this training. After Dash insisted that Devin join the training, she agreed and joined without fail every day. Additionally, according to Mr. Kim, they were about to learn the first movements of Kung Fu. That's what I'm talking about, my presence increased Sensei Kim's pressure, Devin said, elbowing Dash, who was drinking water. Mr. Kim stood in front of his two students and said, Kung Fu is a very ancient martial art that dates back to a long time ago, when knights in China learned combat techniques to develop their fighting skills. These techniques have been translated into what is known as the five elements of Kung Fu. These include karate, taekwondo, judo, aikido, and kung fu in fighting style. Dash's eyes sparkled with excitement. Right now, he was about to begin his indoctrination with the known movements of kung fu. Mr. Kim ignored the fact that they called him sensei and said, We will divide the class into two phases. In the first one, you will learn the basic movements of kung fu. These techniques focus on basic principles such as posture, alignment, breathing, and combat movements. These techniques are practiced at an elementary level to help develop a skill set in Kung Fu, and move on to the next level, which would be advanced. Dash was not impatient, he just wanted to assess his adaptation to martial arts, and see how good he was at performing these doctrines. He knew that Kung Fu is often described as a lifelong journey. While it takes years, or even decades, to reach an experienced level in this martial art, it is possible to learn the basics in a relatively short period, as Dree did in the known story. Follow my movements, first, we will learn the basic stance, and you will adjust it to the way you feel most comfortable. Saying this, Mr. Kim assumed a basic stance for Dash and Devon to implement. I thought it would be more amazing, Devon murmured as she assumed the posture. This posture is known as the horse stance, a standard starting point for learning to throw punches, Mr. Kim said very seriously. Dash then spread his feet to a distance of 3 to 4 feet from each other. He crouched until his hips were above his knees and straightened his spine by tilting the upper torso slightly backward. Now he understood why flexibility was important for this, at least Devin had no problem as she practiced gymnastics occasionally. This is more complicated than I expected. Mr. Kim then said, use the horse stance to lower and stabilize your center of gravity when practicing punches and strikes with your arms. Remember to always maintain a straight posture to ensure that your body and muscles align properly. Alright, that's enough. Rest for two minutes, and then return to the horse stance until you no longer feel pain in your muscles, Mr. Kim said, letting his students rest. Dash and Devon sat on the ground, right now, they were training in an artificial forest a few kilometers from their house, and the place was suitable because there weren't many people early in the morning. After training and continued training, Dash, behind Mr. Kim's back, practiced movements he saw on the internet to avoid being caught off guard in a fight that never happened. You should train alone only once a day, that way, you might keep up with me in this training, and not seem like you can barely handle your body. Perhaps because he trained a lot, Dash, who was leaning against the trunk of an old tree, did not hear Devin's suggestion since he would normally respond, showing how tired he was. But he couldn't stop, if he wanted to try participating in that kung fu tournament, he needed at least to adapt to fights, and have a body acceptable enough not to make a fool of himself, which would really affect him mentally. Still, Dash wondered if, hypothetically, he participated in that tournament, he would have to fight someone like Cheng or some other successful fighter. At least he should put on a good show and reach the quarterfinals. Are you listening to me? Devon asked again, turning her head to look at Dash, who had fallen asleep. Alright, guys, let's continue with the horse stance, and now we'll throw straight punches. Mr. Kim said, clapping forcefully. Dash, who was asleep, opened his eyes, turned his head, and saw Devin staring at him, so he asked, what happened? Horse stance and straight punches, Devin said as she got up from the ground. She didn't know what Dash's sudden obsession with martial arts was. They were incredible, but that's not the point of her doubts. Devin really didn't understand if her friend had suddenly gotten excited about fighting in that tournament, he mentioned every chance he got, but she hoped that wouldn't affect him, if he really got his butt kicked. Even at this point, Devin doesn't know why she cares about Dash. Everyone can take a beating, and if he really cares about this, a defeat shouldn't affect him. But she would be angry to lose, she had made sure to lose a few times in her life. If you want me to go to that tournament in China, you should at least not act recklessly, but also don't torture yourself. Injuries could end your hopes of participating in that tournament. By the way, is there a women's division? 
There is no kung fu division, but we could look for a karate one, since it's not very different and is easier to find around here, Dash replied, slightly excited about Devin's interest in the tournament. Mr. Kim had heard about that kung fu tournament Dash kept talking about, he had done some research and knew that children between 9 and 13 years old could participate, so Dash, who was 11, could be considered a candidate, but he fears he won't advance much among competitors who have trained since they were 5. Alright, punch. Mr. Kim shouted as Dash and Devin followed him behind each punch. Again, punch. Dash maintained his serene expression, feeling his legs burn, and muscles he hadn't used before began to ache. This was incredible, that feeling of pain was incredible, and he knew that in a short time, there would be more improvements. Dash had just taken a cold shower, which gave him the energy he needed to continue his day normally, like any ordinary person. As he dried himself, he could see his slim body that now had more muscle. In fact, he had gained muscles that he had only seen in movies and renowned athletes, all at the age of 11. Now that I'm not pale and can breathe properly, I'm more handsome than usual. Definitely, I'm handsome, Dash tried to convince himself that he was at least above average. Although his messy hair gave him a natural look, Devin always told him not to comb it, although he did, but not with much care. With his black hair, big eyes, and more defined expressions, his eyebrows stood out. Training frequently outside the house had given his fair complexion a slightly healthier color. In terms of style, he failed a bit because he loved black clothes. On his youthful face, his big and expressive eyes stood out, displaying his fierceness and energy. Admiring himself for a few minutes, Dash received a video call that he answered because he was mostly dressed. Do you know that the new movie Unlimited Power has been released, and people are talking a lot about it? Devin asked with clear intentions. Yes, we can go tomorrow since it's Saturday Dash nodded, thinking it would be great to watch a movie now that he had spent a lot of time training. Don't talk nonsense, we can buy tickets for the evening show. My parents will be back late, they won't be able to take me home, so it will be complicated, Devin smiled and said, my mother will take us. If you don't want to go back home, you can stay over, do you have any other excuse? That would be great. What time should we meet? Dash smiled unnaturally, it seemed that a part of him wanted to stay calm for today, due to the tough training, but it seemed that Devin had made plans without considering his fatigue. Come to my house at 7, Devin said, but stopped because her phone's camera switched. Can you see how amazing my genetics are? Look at those biceps, look at my abdomen, my god, I've been training for no more than 4 months, and I already have a dominant body. On the other side of the call, Devin's face didn't change at all. Dash now looked like one of those guys who constantly show off their bodies, but since until recently, he was a paper-thin stick, she assumed he was excited to flaunt his muscles. Wow, you do have good genetics, amazing Devin couldn't help but be surprised at the change in Dash's once skinny physique. Hey Devin, will we pick up Dash, or will he come home? Devin's mother, Mrs. Oli, entered her daughter's room and was surprised when she saw Dash on the computer screen, intending to give her innocent daughter a presentation of the male human anatomy. Though, darn, mom Devin was even more shocked, not for herself, but because her mother might make a ridiculous misunderstanding in her head. She recently heard from Dash that his mother thinks they kiss, so she didn't want her mother to think ridiculous things too, or their families would start putting restrictions on the relationship she had with Dash, and that was the last thing she wanted. Can you see these muscles, Devin? Are you still there, or have you fainted? Haha, <laughs> listen well, these babies are going to grow, and I'll name them. If you want, you can touch them once we meet, and admire my absolute hard work. Devin closed her eyes, resisting the urge to explode and cursed Ash, until he ran out of breath. But for the sake of her peace tonight, she decided not to do it, and took a deep breath. Hey, we should go to the aquatic center and wear swimsuits. Not to brag, but few guys my age in this country have my physique. Yeah, I'll call you later, Devin said as she ended the call and looked at her mother, who continued to stare at her in a perplexed way. It's not what it looks like, mom. I didn't say anything, daughter. You and young Dash can have whatever relationship you want. When you both grow up, you'll be the envy of everyone. Mom, stop it. Devin was annoyed, not with her mother but with Dash. Doesn't he have anything better to do than show off the muscles of his upper body in a video call? What's wrong? It's not a bad choice. I'm sure Dash will be very handsome once he grows up, and you're lucky that he only has eyes for you besides Kung Fu. You've known each other for more than 5 years, so it's normal for both of you to feel attracted. Do you know that the first love is at 5 years old? You could've felt it and not realized it, also vice versa with Dash. Mom, it's not what you think. Devin started to feel embarrassed. Okay, go down for dinner, Zoe said, ending her teasing of her daughter. I'll be down in a moment. Devin leaned back in her chair and closed her eyes, trying to calm down. 
Things have been very hectic lately with this kung fu stuff. Dash, it addressed, looked at himself in the mirror board and muttered, What a stupid TV ad, that's ridiculous. Mom, Mrs. Zhou will take us to the movies, and she says I can stay at her house after that. Can I go? Dash quickly called his mom during lunch. Do you have money? I haven't spent anything from what my dad gives me monthly, there wouldn't be a problem. Dash replied as he applied some of his father's cologne. Alright, I'll call Mrs. Zhou to confirm that and send the driver to take you. Elena then hung up the call. His mother sent this, the first bag has a gift for Devin's mother, and the second one has some clothes for you. Also, his mother put some money in there, said the driver, after Dash got off at Devin's house an hour earlier than agreed. Thanks for being considerate, mom, this is a lot of money. Dash thought as he saw the amount in cash, and decided to keep it all in his wallet, which was an old gift from his father. I'll be going then, tell my mom that I'm excited and full of energy. After leaving the driver behind, Dash arrived at the house he hadn't been to in over a month, and gently knocked on the door. Will it be the same movie I saw in my past life? I hope the actors haven't changed, although some definitely won't be where they should be, because I'm in an exciting movie today, at least, he would distract himself with Devon and the movie. At home, he either trained or was alone. Although he was familiar with that feeling, he found it overwhelming to feel any resemblance to his past life, which was a hell. A little change is okay, maybe letting his body rest for a few days is the right thing to do to improve. Still, leaving behind the hard training for exercises with familiar attack movements, is what he had been doing at night. I'm coming. Devon, who had received Dash's message, rushed down the stairs and opened the door. Dash on the other side smiled, then said, Look Devon, I brought orange cake. How adorable. You better come in before I hit you. Devon sighed with a bit of exhaustion after having a long conversation with her mother about the relationship between couples. Although what happened a few hours ago with the call was not Devon's fault but his, everything about this strange matter bothered her a bit. If you tell me what happened, I won't ask again. Dash handed the cake to Devon and entered the house. He looked around as if searching for something, and then focused on his friend, who was acting strangely. My mother entered my room just when we were talking on a video call, Devon said as she left the cake in the kitchen. And is that bad? I've talked to you in my living room when my mom is reviewing documents, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Dash walked to the living room and sat on a long couch while taking control of the TV. Devon really didn't want to, but Dash was getting a beating with every word he said, and she told him, I was on my laptop, she saw the whole show you were putting on the call and believes, no, she's sure we like each other. When those words came out of Devon's mouth, there was a long silence. Dash, who was about to turn on the TV, then understood what his friend was referring to and thought about it. What does it matter? Well, maybe many would think so, but this can be much more delicate than they think if taken lightly. Of course, Devon wouldn't know that yet, so she replied, does it matter at all? Aren't you listening to me? Devon replied as she sat in front of Dash, who was calm, and said, that would be super awkward, it wouldn't be normal. So tell me, what do we do if our mothers think that? Dash asked indifferently. Well, nothing alright, problem solved. Dash was convinced that it would be more obvious to deny, and much more uncomfortable if they thought about it carefully. This same conversation had unfolded twice, first when Dash told Devon about the kisses and punches that his family never found out about, and just now when his friend was affected. Leave this to me, I'm good at talking to people. Dash stood up when he heard noises on the stairs and saw Devon's mother coming down. Devon touched her forehead and murmured, but you're terrible at conversations. Dash, it's nice to see you. Zoe said as she approached to greet him. Mrs. Lee, as always, it's a pleasure to be able to visit your beautiful house, Dash greeted the kind Mrs. Zoe, and just as he was about to speak, a cell phone rang. They're calling me, make yourself comfortable, I'll come down when it's time for the movie. Of course, we'll be down here. Dash smiled broadly until Zoe left, and he muttered, you're right, I'm not very good with conversations. Forget it, do you want something to drink? Devon needed to take a breather to release all that tension from her body, so she got up and walked to the kitchen. Just water Dash sat without paying much attention to what had just happened when suddenly his phone vibrated. Bree Parker. I hate China, buddy, the kids here are really hard to understand literally Dash was surprised and replied calmly. Well, learn, idiot. You're in China, buddy. My uncle once bought horse meat without realizing it. Dree Parker. You don't understand, there's a group my age that bullies me, and I can't do anything to defend myself because they are expert fighters. Then learn from some hidden master and give them a beating. If you were the king of Detroit, you can also be the king of Beijing. I'm also learning some kung fu, and I can tell you that right now, I'm like those movie guys. Dree Parker. I'm going to eat, I just wanted to tell someone I'll survive until you decide to visit this wonderful place. 
Yeah, well, that won't happen until before the tournament, Dash murmured without writing more. Who are you talking to? Dash took a sip of water and said, My friend who moved to China says some guys his age are bothering him. Everyone is crazy right now with this school and dynamic fighting stuff. As you say, I'll go change. Devin left Dash alone, who comfortably turned on the TV to watch some sensationalist news. A good dose of brainwashing, well, guys, let's leave a bit earlier to buy the tickets, Mrs. Zhou said, walking towards the car. Yeah, that's great, Dash walked to the back of the car and sat down. This time he might not talk much with Devin, but he figured she was a bit on edge after what had recently happened. The movie you wanted to see is rated for adults, so you can't watch it alone, but it'll be like an invisible wall for you. Not again, Mom Devin looked at her mother as if she wanted her to stop. Don't worry, Mrs. Lee, we're grateful, and personally, I don't mind her presence, Dash said, showing a charming smile, even though he was very tired and his body ached. Grateful. You don't need to be so polite with my mother, treat her more casually, Devin turned her head towards Dash, who maintained his charming smile. Do you want double butter popcorn, as you like? I heard they now sell hot dogs and hamburgers, we could buy some along with the milkshakes. Dash was starving, and he needed to recharge his energy. What's that you have in your hand? Devin diverted her attention to the thing Dash was occasionally squeezing and finally asked. This. Dash handed her his hand strengthener and said, that's the 10 pounder, I have a 5 pound one that I could give you, since I haven't used it in months. Devin, who took the strengthener, tried to press it with one hand and failed. She looked back at Dash as if he were a pain addict and murmured, you're taking it too quite a long and painful extreme. I joined Kung Fu classes, but my approach will be more passive. Still, I'll give you the 5 pounder, it could help increase your grip strength. Dash was very excited about this trip, even though he wasn't before, as he had never been to the movies, and his memory of it is very blurry. When they reached the parking lot, Dash got out, and feeling the cold, he put his hands in his hoodie. There were many people, mostly couples and teenagers, which was normal since it was Friday, and tomorrow, no one had classes. I'll buy the tickets, you can go buy whatever you want to eat, Mrs. Zhou smiled at her daughter, and she walked to the ticket line. Dash immediately lined up behind a man with a hat and looked at the long queue ahead. Wow, just now I got a little discouraged seeing this long line, you're right, but now I want a hot dog. Devin said with a smile as she looked at the large crowds of people. Now that she had distanced herself from her mother, the tension around her had disappeared, and she didn't even notice. This place is amazing, you could see people bringing in food from outside, since what they sell here is usually not of very good quality, and sometimes it's not pleasant to wait for more than 10 minutes to buy what you'll see during the show. Now that I consider it, I might join the tournament. I think it would be good to get hit and find rivals who want to beat me. Ash understood how crazy he sounded but tried to explain his point, I mean, most kids our age are afraid of getting hit. I read somewhere that it's good to adapt to those kinds of situations, we could even train our senses and reaction speed. By the way, isn't it strange to find someone to fight with? Dash shook his head at Devon's words and said, if you pay them to fight you, it's not extreme, anyone would do it. Of course, the risks are a bit high, but if I do that, my fighting style can improve. Since it's just you and me, we don't have anyone else to practice with, obviously, I can't hit you with force or use techniques on you. Devon, without showing a change, said, but I can, so if you plan on spending your money to find someone to just hit you, you can ask me, and I'll do it for free. I still suspect that you're angry with me, but obviously that's impossible because I'm a saying Dash should realize when he should keep quiet. The last time they argued was about whether it was right to kill stray puppies that aren't adopted. In that half debate, half discussion, Dash mentioned that if people were aware that they kill dogs that aren't adopted, they would do something. Still, Dash was against any idiot having a pet. Not everyone is prepared to have a complete extra, so that should be evaluated even if it means even fewer stray puppies being adopted. Dogs are not wild animals, they can't live out there without humans, since they would naturally die without them. That point was a bit confusing for people, but when they understand it, they realize the reality. I want two hot dogs. Devon said when she saw the dash had fallen silent, she tousled her friend's combed hair, and they bought more things than they would probably eat. When Mrs. Zhou saw them approaching, she mentioned, that's a lot of food, I guess you won't have dinner Mrs. Lee, maybe you haven't seen Devon when she's hungry, she turns into a lioness and leaves nothing but crumbs. Dash finished his words with a broad smile, feeling something pinching his side. Well, let's go in before the show starts. Zhou smiled even wider and looked at her daughter, who was left speechless by Dash's sincerity. Hey, can you stop telling my mom those kinds of things? Devon, who had immediately calmed down, turned into a fierce creature, giving Dash many reasons to not, and let this anger pass. 
Before, he didn't believe it, but now he knows that there are still things about Devon that he doesn't fully understand, so he should be more careful. Tried the popcorn with double butter, they're very salty. As soon as Dash finished the food they had bought, he began to doze off. He really didn't want to, but things got complicated for him, and he fell asleep halfway through the movie. That was a good movie. I still can't believe one can have such incredible powers just by being in the presence of an alien object, Dash said while looking at Devon, who walked silently beside him. Too bloody for my taste, Mrs. Zoe murmured, smiling. You fell asleep, Dash. Did you even get any sleep? Devon gave him a suspicious look. Dash pointed to himself and asked, are you saying I fell asleep? I was just finding my inner self and my place in nature. Come on, ask me anything about the movie. Not necessary, I'm exhausted. Dash didn't say much either, he had fallen asleep because he was tired, but if he admitted it, it would obviously be a cause for mockery from Devon, who lately was a bit sensitive. After getting into the car, everyone returned to the Lee family's house, and Dash, who was falling asleep again, was awakened by Devon shaking him a bit. Today it was a pleasant day, besides training, they had done many other things, and it felt good to be able to sleep a little, as it made him feel like he had another safe place. Before waking up in this new life, everything was crap. Days after days of crap and a lot of pain because he needed to make an effort to breathe. For him, breathing wasn't natural, he had to be conscious of it at every moment. Upon entering the house, Devin walked to her room, and Dash followed her. She didn't mention anything, and he didn't either. Your house is amazing, I don't understand why my family needs such a huge house where one can get lost easily well, since you want to push yourself more, let's train. Dash, who had just entered Devon's room, received a knee to the ribs that made him step back a few paces. What the hell, Devon? Dash complained, but when he looked up, a fist was now covering his face, causing him to instinctively dodge it. What? We're just training, I hope this way you can concentrate. Fine, lately I've been focused only on kung fu, but it's temporary. Once we learn everything we need to learn, it will be like something instinctive in our veins, and we won't have to train every day. Just fight, it seems like it's the only thing on your mind. Well, I'm against uncontrolled fights, just like now, and obviously, I won't hit you. Ash understood that maybe Devin was upset because he fell asleep, and now that she has been learning kung fu, her anger is coming out in a different way. Hum. Devin took this seriously and kicked Ash, who immediately avoided it, and at that point, raised his fists in a defensive mode. Alright, I'll invite you tomorrow to eat those pancakes we saw on the internet. It's not far from here, and we can take a taxi, Dash couldn't help it but started laughing, he didn't know what was happening, but it was fun. Don't you take me seriously. At this point, Dash stopped laughing, looked at Devin seriously because it seemed like she really wanted to face him in a practice match, but he knew he was missing something. How would he explain to Mrs. O as she saw him fighting with her only daughter right now? I'll finish this quickly, let's go. Devon, in a basic and somewhat clumsy combat stance, just like Dash, began closing the distance and threw a punch. At this point, Dash, who saw Devon's fist, managed to deflect it with his left hand, and, with an opening, pushed her with a kick that didn't carry much force. That's one point. Yes, but we're not fighting with rules. Devon, who had held Dash's foot, bent over and kicked the only foot supporting him. Pum. Falling backward, Dash looked at Devon with a somewhat thoughtful expression. Seeing her smiling sadly as if she were expressing that she's better than him without much training, made Dash want to teach her a lesson. With his extended foot, he kicked her leg. Ah. Devon was surprised to lose strength in her leg, which hadn't been hit with much force, and she fell to one side. But immediately after, Dash, with his left foot, made a cross movement and pulled her towards his side. Do you still want to continue? Dash asked, having Devon in a somewhat strange luck. Fine, I give up. Devon, who seemed indifferent, raised her hands, making him nod and let her go. However, at that moment, Dash, who had sat down, saw Devon getting up, and when he thought she wouldn't do anything, she began grabbing him by the neck. Hey, didn't you just give up? Dash put his hands on his neck to prevent his crazy friend from trying to choke him, and shortly after gaining control, he got on his knees. Why don't you want to hit me? Wait, wait, it's not that I underestimate you. You my friend, and obviously, I never thought about hitting you. Dash grunted as he searched for a way out of this. Guess what, you're not the only one learning. Now I know, get off my back before your mother comes in and complicates the situation. First question about the movie, what's the moral? Dash was blank for a moment and answered, never trust your friends. Are you crazy? Obviously, they killed each other over a misunderstanding that could have been resolved with words. Devin at this point couldn't tolerate Dash's opinion because she believed it was different. Well, now will you tell me why you're angry? 
It's nothing, I just argued with a guy on the internet who had somewhat racist thoughts. And your solution is to take it out on your friend. Dash stopped processing information a while ago for the sake of his mental peace. You're my friend, you should be the one to help me vent. I thought you were angry with me, for God's sake, now you can get off. Dash was about to get up when some bears came into the hallway on their way to this room, and a voice said, Honey, tell your friend that dinner is ready. Dad yeah, we're coming. Devin let go of Dash, and he stood up. After this little fight, Dash asked Devin about that discussion, and found out that she was arguing on a Chinese forum, where they criticized foreign martial arts for their poor effectiveness. You should consider leaving that about debates that lead nowhere, much better in person so you can intimidate with your gaze. Dash smiled and gave his friends some advice. That's a good idea. Tell me, Dash, how was the movie? Devin's father, Zack Lee, asked as they had dinner. It was fun Devin coughed a bit and said, the movie was good, but Dash fell asleep halfway through, so he can't say much about this story. Zoe looked at her daughter and said, I guess you had other priorities than just watching the movie, darling. You are so charming. Cough, haha, ha, ha. I usually fall asleep in movies too, which annoys Devin a lot. Zack broke the tension caused by his wife to their daughter and smiled slightly. Well, lately, I've been training a lot Dash looked to Devin, who lightly kicked him to change the conversation. Oh, that surely improves the muscles. This is torture. So stop talking about this and change the subject, by the way, Devin mentioned that you would enter some kind of tournament. How does that work? Dash's eyes sparkled, and he said, well, I'm not sure if they would accept me yet, but it would be in China, and if I can enter, obviously, everyone would be invited. After diverting the conversation many times, Dash and Devin said their goodbyes as it was time to sleep. After dinner, Dash entered the guest room, and the smile on his face slowly faded. Once again, that unpleasant feeling began to take over his thoughts. Dash Hale, an 11-year-old, felt like the world was spinning, and because of that, he locked himself in a doctrine that might not be the best thing to do, but he couldn't bring himself to cry. It was the year 2013, he couldn't remember when the main events involving the Kung Fu tournament and others originated, but he knew that at least he was the right age to participate. Previously, Dash had thought a lot about it, and believed that after many things, practicing was fun. Feeling that he could breathe was something that comforted him, and now that Devin practices with him, it's much more enjoyable. But he didn't know why, since he arrived here, he had focused a lot on one thing, and that is the practice of Kung Fu. Before that, he spent time on many other things that he also liked, but that was the Dash who hadn't died in a wheelchair alone. It really is crazy, and I'm sorry for forgetting it for a moment Dash had accepted everything very quickly, without realizing that he should be aware of everything around him. Before wanting to be the Dragon Warrior at 11, he should assume that he is a child who doesn't know the right path to take. Devin's anger might have been the concern that he had changed a lot. Currently, she is the only friend he has, there is no one else in his school life, and if he thinks that she will always be with him, it's thinking too much of their friendship. For that same reason, he should consider being more attentive. He died alone, so in some way, he fears dying in the same way. To change that, he should first consider the close people he has. So far, he had only thought about himself, he even stopped considering Devin's opinion if she really likes Kung Fu. Sitting in the dark room, Dash smiled as he felt more foolish than ever. What can he tell Devin that she's not just practicing Kung Fu for him? You're asleep a whispering voice reached the other side of the door, and Dash immediately got up. Upon opening the door, Dash looked at his incredible friend and smiled slightly. Hey, sorry lifting his head and taking a deep breath, this was the only thing Dash could say as his eyes filled with tears. The memories of his entire life in the hospital, being connected to a machine that helped him breathe, and hearing every day how people were visited by their loved ones, is something that hurt him deeply, even if he says he doesn't want to admit it. What happened? Devin approached Dash, very confused and scared by her friend's now strange behavior. I didn't consider whether you like Kung Fu, I just dragged you into all of this, because I didn't want to feel alone, you're the only one who can understand me, so forgive me if I wasn't considerate. I'm sorry also for only talking about one thing. Devin didn't know what to say, seeing Dash in such a vulnerable state scared her a lot, as she never would have imagined that he felt that way. Maybe for many, she wasn't a good friend, but she had always been like that, and Dash was the only one who managed to understand her. At all times, even in the most absurd fights, Dash followed her closely. Maybe sometimes he wasn't considerate, but he understood that maybe he had the wrong idea in his mind. Don't be an idiot, I also want to learn to kick some ass. Devin approached Dash and hugged him tightly, this was the only way she felt she could bring relief to her friend. Dash's mind was in chaos. Due to the constant pressure of his thoughts, he didn't find his friend at an appropriate moment, and he cried. He wasn't ashamed, he needed this, and he hadn't realized it until now as he began to reflect in silence. I was just in a bad mood, but it wasn't because of you. Besides, you know I don't do something if I don't really like it, or if it doesn't catch my attention. Devin also started crying without really knowing why. Dash didn't stop hugging his friend for quite some time. 
It had been a long time since the last time he had cried, and only now did he understand that he was worse off than he expected. He didn't want to feel that feeling of loneliness. In his dreams, it always happened. The feeling of loneliness and abandonment had consumed the thoughts of his past self, and although he thought it would disappear in this new life, it wasn't the case. He knew that if he didn't control this, it might lead to depression, and maybe it was good to have found peace in his friend, the one he could open up to. Although he had parents, he still remembered how he used to wait for them every day, and they seemed to have abandoned him over time. He didn't blame them, but he couldn't trust them because they were the ones who left him alone. He should be happy, he felt that way every day, but when night came, he couldn't help but feel afraid that all of this might end. Although it never happened and might never happen, he couldn't find a way to rid himself of all that weight on his conscience. When did it happen? Sitting on a couch side by side, Devin asked Ash while holding his hand. It wasn't always like this, he started feeling this way some time ago. He didn't want to blame his parents because it wasn't their fault. This was something he felt only at night, and Devin took him by surprise by coming at this hour. Dash said with a smile, now that he had calmed down, the only thing he felt was a slight embarrassment for giving that impression. I joined the training with you not because of your invitations. No matter what we're doing, I'm happy to be with you. You're someone who understands me, so I don't want you to think our friendship will drift apart because it will never happen, I promise, Devon said, smiling slightly. I have to thank you for that, and just in case, I want you to always tell me if something bothers you. What happened today was strange, and I hope it doesn't happen again because I'll always be there for you, Dash said sincerely as he looked up with a more lively gaze than before. The usual Dash had returned, and that horrible feeling had disappeared. I still can't feel the excitement of training, but I'm sure you'll show me in the upcoming tournament, Devon said as she patted Dash on the back. After talking about many things Dash wanted to do, he realized Devon had fallen asleep next to him and smiled slightly at that. Carefully, he picked her up and took her to bed. When he was about to walk back to the couch, he felt that Devon didn't let go. I guess it doesn't matter if we sleep in the same bed, right? We're just friends. Dash thought as he lay down next to Devon and closed his eyes. Although there were many things to overcome, Dash thought he would eventually overcome this, and also reaffirmed the idea that he wasn't alone. In this life, he wasn't alone, and he would make sure to be a good friend. What a pleasant dream murmured Devon as she slowly opened her eyes. However, upon feeling a hand around her waist, she got scared. Just as she was about to get up, she remembered the previous night. She rose, looked at Dash, who was still deeply asleep, and got up very slowly without making any noise. How careless I was, damn it, she muttered to herself. If her parents were already making jokes about her ambiguous relationship with Dash, she couldn't imagine what they would say if they found out she had slept in the same room as her friend. This is insane, I hope my father isn't home, or it will be a headache. Just as Devon was about to enter her room, her father's voice came from behind, Good morning, daughter. Just woke up. Oh, yes, just now I made hot chocolate, wake up to Ash when you change, and tell him he can try it. Don't forget that hot chocolate is my specialty. Devon nodded and with an unnatural smile said, I'll let him know, father. I'm sure he'll love your hot chocolate. Zach looked at his daughter, who rushed into her room, and smiled. Youthful love was the best thing in life, and he was glad she was experiencing it with someone worthwhile. Not long after, Dash woke up refreshed and full of energy. The first thing he did was some warm-up exercises before taking a shower. Since Devon had disappeared from his room, he assumed she had returned to hers and didn't worry at all. As it was a Saturday, Dash invited Devon to the amusement park for what should be an enjoyable day. In the San Fernando Valley, California, there weren't many places for entertainment, but there were places to spend pleasant moments. Isn't it bad for you not to train? Devon walked alongside Dash after her father left them here before going to work. Not at all. Mr. Kim advised us to relax on the weekends because next week he'll start supervising our battle simulation training. Dash smiled as he heard Devon's questioning, but he had made his own decisions regarding Kung Fu. Many people make good friends in high school, but most of them drift apart due to the paths each chooses in life. Childhood doesn't always last long, and when it ends, the nostalgia that follows can lead to thoughts of regret for not making certain decisions. Dash didn't want to regret anything in this life, and because he spent all the time he remembered in a hospital in his previous life, he wanted to enjoy a little now. Alright, then let's buy a lot of food because we need to replenish the energy we'll need. Devon dragged Dash to a stall selling churros with chocolate. Since I visited my vulnerable side yesterday, and you helped me, today I'll treat you to everything you eat. Dash smiled as he paid for the churros, then said, The games will be open all day today, we could try each one. Are you so generous? I haven't spent on anything related to my previous tastes for months, so I've saved a lot from what my father gives me. Alright, then let's try them all. Devon felt much better letting go of all those worries that made her nervous and enjoyed this day. After passing by a dozen food and game stalls, Dash and Devon were sitting under a tree, resting from the infamous heat. 
The heat is crazy Devin, who had been the most enthusiastic in trying each of the games, smiled after getting tired enough to suggest taking a break. Don't forget to drink water, it would be a bigger madness if you get dehydrated. Dash had been recently chatting with Dre, who had told him about having a master named Mr. Han. I've been investigating, and I found out that every year there's a karate competition where all the dojos in the valley participate. This year's tournament will be held soon, so if we train a lot, we could try our luck in that competition. Devon then told Dash about what she had found online. Is there something like this, and we haven't heard about it? Dash asked, slightly interested. There's a long history of karate in this place. I didn't have the patience to investigate, but if it's before the tournament you want to participate in, you could consider joining. Is there a women's division? Devon shook her head but said, it's just one division, but we could participate in that same division, and I don't think there would be a problem. But it would be more interesting if there's a women's division, that way, we could be possible winners in both. Dash said as he watched the sun being covered by a massive cloud. The two trained together, progressed as a team, but both were aware of the biological differences between a man and a woman. Devon had just had a discussion with the girl who denied this in all physical senses, a man would always be better than a woman if they weren't limited by some kind of illness. Yes, there might be a chance that certain women outperform some men, but in most cases, this is not the way. That was precisely why Dash talked about this. He knows Devon better than anyone, and knows she's a girl who boasts of not making the same mistake twice, but she may face many challenges before becoming an expert in any discipline. The same goes for Dash, this tournament might help him learn much more about karate, and, in the meantime, prepare for the Kung Fu tournament in China. I'll talk to my father about this, maybe he can do something for the next tournament. Now that Dash knew about a karate tournament, he couldn't help but be interested. I need to go to the bathroom. Can you watch my drink? Dash handed his soda to Devon and headed to the restroom. Sure, if you don't come back soon, I might just drink it myself. Then I'd buy another, but it's a pity for you since I won't take long, Dash ran to the men's restroom with a slight smile on his face. All the things he had done today were incredible, and he didn't feel guilty about not training. He needed to spend some days like this as it helped a lot with his mental state. The courage he had gathered to prove he could be strong was something he had successfully done so far, but he ignored the fact that there were amazing things he had wanted to do before, and had stopped thinking about them after waking up in this life. That tournament feels very familiar. Dash thought, unable to get the annual tournament held in this place out of his head. He obviously knew about the tournament in China because he knew Dre Parker and all the details that needed to be checked to confirm that it was the same story, considering there was Cheng, Mr. Han, and other details he couldn't remember. Maybe in his past life, there were countless similar tournaments, but in this life, it was important to Dash for many personal reasons. The excuse that he was familiar with Dre and the Kung Fu tournament was just a step he wanted to take to see how strong he could make his body, which was once weak. That was his dream to be the true dragon and reach the top where many warriors had stepped at least once in their lives. When Dash came out of the bathroom, he looked toward Devon, and was surprised to see her arguing with some guys who seemed to be about the same age. Those guys looked like idiots from a long distance away, so Dash immediately knew that they were messing with Devon, looking for trouble and fun for themselves. Spilling my drink, you should at least apologize for that. Devon shook her hand, covered in soda, and stopped when she saw Dash approaching silently. Have you heard that, Kyler? She wants you to pay for the drink you spilled. This is the first time a girl has spoken to me like this. Is something wrong, Devon? Dash walked toward Devon and stepped in front of the guys who clearly intended to be idiots. The idiot with spiky hair threw your drink at me intentionally, he should apologize, that's the least he can do. Devon said, reserving her last intentions of giving those guys a beating. You're talking in a very pathetic tone. Do you think your loser boyfriend can handle the four of us? You must be Kyler. We'll let this go as long as you keep walking. Dash didn't want to fight more with guys his age, it would be abusing his knowledge as a fighter. It's a shame your girl isn't my type, she's too much of a kid for my tastes. Dash was left speechless by the attitudes of the guys his age. How is it that many of them act like this? You shouldn't have said that Dash wanted to shout at that idiot that they were kids. How could a kid in the growth stage be attractive? Haha, <laughs> I want to see what you'll do, damn loser. Kyler, who stared at Dash with amusement, prepared his right leg, exerted force on his joints, and stared coldly at Dash, who seemed to be having fun. Currently, Dash had been looking for some real combat experience, and although inexperienced kids weren't the best choice, it was good for them to get a beating, so they would understand how tough life would be when they grow up. At this moment, preparing a move in Dash's mind that he wanted to try with this guy, he started to move. Taking a bit of momentum, Dash jumped, but not enough to use his spinning kick on Kyler's jaw. Instead, he wanted it to hit his shoulder, since the results would be more controlled. After all, a wrong head could end a person's life, and that's the last thing he wanted in his life. Pump. The momentum of the kick, the force exerted, and Kyler's bad posture made him fall to the ground and writhe in pain after receiving Dash's kick on his shoulder. 
At the same time that Dash kicked Kyler, another guy moved from his left side and tried to punch him, but at that moment, Devin also launched a kick. What the hell is this? Kyler screamed in pain and looked at Dash with much more fear. This is Kung Fu, arrogant idiot. Devin pointed at Kyler with her hand and gave him a curse with her middle finger. Is no one going to do anything? Kyler looked at his friends, expecting them to move. Friend, he knows karate darn it, he just said it's kung fu, idiot. Kyler got up hastily. However, at that moment, Dash wasn't as stupid as to let him get up like that, so he directed a momentum kick to Kyler's chest to prevent him from standing. Ah, damn coward, let me get up. At that moment, Dash smiled and said, Well, we apologize for giving you a little kick, does anyone else have a problem? None hey, is someone fighting? The police officer on duty in this place looked at the whole crowd that had gathered. The kids, haha, ha, those guys are incredible. Devin, we saw the things were about to get out of control, took a step forward and kicked Kyler, this time in the balls, before running away with Dash. Haha, ha, that idiot deserved it. You leave him without kids. Dash thought, feeling a bit sorry for Kyler, who had received that painful blow. Seeing that things had escalated to this point, both decided to go back home, and Dash, who agreed, took Devin home first before returning to his own. That same weekend, Dash learned that Devin couldn't participate in training because she was visiting her grandmother. However, he told her it wasn't important since he also had plans and wouldn't be able to train much. In that case, what he had been doing was practicing jumps and kicks in the air. With a young body, Dash could do things he had never done before, and he easily began hitting a training dummy. Pum. 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 After dozens of kicks using spinning kicks, Dash moved on to rising kicks, descending kicks, butterfly kicks, and hook kicks. All his kicks were precise, and only because he hadn't faced real opponents, he didn't know what level he was at the moment. Your strikes should be faster, stronger, and smarter at that moment, Mr. Kim's voice came from behind where Dash was engrossed. With his typical haggard appearance, Mr. Kim walked toward the training dummy and kicked it. Hum. The kick sent the training dummy flying, the force was directed towards the chest, and the impact force was such that the blow itself seemed very strong. If you're going to face guys with much more experience than you, you should focus on close combat and train more abundantly in a single doctrine. Although Kung Fu is diverse, you don't have time to compare yourself to students with much more discipline than you, and you must get used to the idea that you could be defeated in the preliminaries. Dash understood this point, it was challenging to beat students with much more experience and combat experience than him. The chances of winning were few, but he still wanted to try. I want to try, I don't mind if I lose. I want to prove that I'll be even stronger. Dash walked toward the training dummy and lifted it. Looking at Dash's knuckles, Mr. Kim raised his eyebrows and said, That's why you'll train with me on the upper part of your body, and when you're tired, we'll go for the lower part. At least, you should have experience in combat, and I'll make sure to teach you properly. Then, Master, can we practice now? Dash asked much more confidently than when he started. We can do it. Get into position. Dash nodded and raised his fists while slightly leaning his body. His gaze focused on his master's body, and at one point, he began to move. Mr. Kim, with his serious face and penetrating eyes, received hard blows and began guiding Dash through the fundamental movements. Dash's grace and agility surprised Mr. Kim, who, although he didn't show it, saw innate potential in his young disciple. When he started training Dash, he thought he would give up in a week, but contrary to that, he has worked even harder to train himself, and he was totally convinced that he wanted to participate in the tournament that would be held in China. As the session progressed, Dash immersed himself more in the flow of the fight, his movements became faster and more fluid. Mr. Kim, initially confident in his skills, began to notice exceptional skill in Dash's movements, a gleam of ability that went beyond his young age, and was more akin to true masters. I must use my kicks more, Dash trusted his kicks more than any other movement, so he tried to perform a hook kick. But at that moment, just as he was about to execute a fainting move, a palm landed on his left shoulder, causing him to step back. That's enough for today, you've been training for a long time, so you should focus on resting. Dash wanted to continue, but he was really tired, so he bowed and went straight to take a cold shower. Mr. Kim, who was wiping off sweat, looked at his palms, which were sore from the strong blows, and murmured, He really has a lot of talent, there's something more than just wanting to learn martial arts, and that will take him far on the morning of the next day. Dash went to class like any other normal day, and the rest of the day passed normally. During lunch, Devin said she had to attend some things related to an exhibition that many local schools were organizing, to which Dash nodded and went alone to the cafeteria for breakfast. The food was simple, and although it wasn't appetizing, he ate what was safer, since the last thing he wanted was to get sick from food he normally wouldn't taste. Besides, he wasn't picky, the food here reminded him of hospital food, so he would start bringing lunch from home. Devin stopped Dash on his way back to the classroom after breakfast when there was still a little more time. She looked at him suspiciously and asked, Surely you're not doing anything out of the ordinary without inviting me, right? Not at all. 
I still haven't decided whether to fight against students, as I told you a few days ago, murmured Dash, slightly thoughtful. It's a shame, it would have been a good memory for today Devin, along with Dash, returned to the classroom, and soon after, classes began. By the way, today I will talk to my dad about the tournament and propose the idea about going to China. Good luck with that. Devin knew how Dash's relationship with his parents was, so all she could say was good luck. For the rest of the day, there was nothing interesting. Dash and Devin agreed to meet later for today's training. In the Haylickers building, Dash got out of a car and walked through the familiar place, heading to his father's office. As usual, he didn't spend much time with his father, but he gave him attention when he needed something from him. That's why today, he wanted to talk to him about the tournaments and hope for his approval. When Frederick saw Dash enter his office, he looked at him for a moment and asked, Well, what do you want? Dash looked at his father and said, I don't remember if I mentioned it, but I recently found out about a kung fu tournament happening in China, and I would like to participate since the friend I told mom about is taking part. But before that, I'd like to know what you think. Frederick set aside what he was doing, and after contemplating his son's words for a while, he said, I don't think you're ready, am I wrong? Wasting people's time is something Frederick despises, and Dash was aware of this. Still, he tried to sound somewhat understanding about what he had been thinking lately before making this request. For him, going to China and participating in the tournament where Dre would fight seemed crazy, as his parents might not approve. He didn't know how to face it, but recently, he had learned from Devin that there was an annual karate tournament in the valley. So, after finding out that this tournament was much earlier than the one in China, he wanted to try something. I admit I have no idea about the skill level of the guys in China, they might be much better. But I would know unless I participate in that tournament. After relaxing a bit, Dash looked his father in the eyes and said, But I have a more convincing proposal, do you want me to believe you'll win the tournament if I take you? Frederick asked, trying to figure out what his son would say to convince him to go. It's not that, Dash smiled a bit and said, Devin told me about a karate tournament in the valley held once a year. I researched the dates of both tournaments, and the one held here is before the one in China. I wanted to propose that if I win that tournament, you'll consider taking me abroad. In fact, Dash had planned to start with this point, but talking to his father was a bit more complicated than he always thought, because he needed to be careful about his behavior. The education he had received was clear, so if he broke some of the behaviors he should always have when they were around, he would be punished. What's it called? Frederick asked, thinking that this proposal was more convenient than the previous one. It's a karate tournament for the entire valley, where they gather dojos, and they crown a male champion. I don't want to sound arrogant, but if I perform well, I'd like you to consider taking me to China. The only way to shine was to take risky bets, and for this proposal, Dash wanted to risk everything and know that he had his father's support. If he didn't win a karate tournament or didn't perform well, he knew he would make a fool of himself in China. For that, Dash would prefer to stay home and train until he reached the right level to win the karate tournament. That sounds much better, but if you want us to go to China, you'll have to win the tournament, and only then will we consider it. You know I like victories, I don't show up in places where I know I wouldn't stand out. Life is like that, and you have to be prepared for it. Then, if I win, I'd like to participate in China. But there's a small problem, and that's the divisions that don't exist in the karate tournament as you know, Devin and I have trained together, so it wouldn't be fair for her to participate in a male tournament. It would be preferable if a female division were opened. To be honest, Dash and Devin found no information about whether women were admitted to the karate tournament. Maybe no woman who joined had won a single tournament, but if it's an annual competition, it's not much of a problem to open a female division. Besides, if she participates in the same division, it wouldn't be fair to have only one winner. In that sense, I want you to talk to a committee member organizing the tournament to see if it's not too much to ask to open a female division. Are you blackmailing me? Frederick asked, raising an eyebrow. I'm just asking for help from my father. I'm afraid that if I fight against Devin, I may not be able to exert my strength over her, not because she's weak, but because she's someone important to me. At this point, Dash had only this easy option, which was to ask his father for help. If he refused, then he would dig deeper to talk to someone from the committee, and find out if they were interested in opening a female competition. If not, Devin would have to participate in a division where she would be at a disadvantage for obvious reasons. It was already difficult for her to face larger girls than her, so it wouldn't be fair for them to be men as well. Fine, I'll handle it. Frederick nodded, and after nodding, he said, If you win this tournament, I'll take you to China. Just train well and focus. Tash remained silent after hearing these words and wondered, Is this his father? Not that he had doubts about it since he knew him, but things like this, he thought his father wouldn't pay attention to. Oh, thanks dad. I'll go then. Dash said as he bid farewell to his father. When Dash left, Frederick pressed a button and said after a call connected, cancel all current appointments, I'll be out for some time. In fact, he had heard about this tournament because Mr. Kim had overheard Dash and Devin talking about it, so he did some research. 
After finding out what bothered his son, he would try to resolve it. Do you need me to accompany you sir? A worker asked, looking at Frederick as he left the office. I won't be long, you can wait here ballet nice LaRusso auto body Frederick stepped out of the car he was driving, and walked towards the facilities of the LaRusso company, which sold cars at this dealership. Welcome, are you here to buy a car? A man approached Frederick, and upon assessing him, he realized it was Daniel, one of the important members of the karate committee in the San Fernando Valley. How much does this car cost? Frederick stood in front of a 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 429, which was truly a beauty. Daniel looked at the car and smiled, this is indeed the beauty of a car. We don't normally have such expensive cars, and since it's a unique piece, the price is $200,000. But if you take it, I can close it at $200,000. These prices are very high. I thought you only sold cars that would pass on to the competition by being affordable well, do you still closely follow the Valley Karate Committee? Frederick looked at Daniel LaRusso and asked directly. Oh, do you want an autograph? Daniel joked with Frederick, but seeing that he didn't smile, he felt a bit uncomfortable and asked, what's the reason for that question? Nothing in particular. My son will participate in the upcoming tournament by the way, I'm Frederick Hale, nice to meet you. Frederick greeted the man in front of him and nodded at his excellent sales skills. If you've seen my ads, you'll know who I am, but nice to meet you, Daniel LaRusso. Daniel felt more at ease knowing that he was talking to a father whose son would compete in the karate tournament and asked, how long has your son been training? I have a daughter, but she has recently set aside karate, so it's admirable that there are still kids interested in the discipline. Not much more than three months, but I wanted to ask if there's a possibility of having a female division, since my son's friend wants to participate. It wouldn't be fair to have only one winner. This conversation pace left Daniel a bit pensive. He tried to keep up with the conversation and finally understood what this man was getting at. Well, there has never been a competition where women are considered, but you're right. We could propose it and see the results in this new tournament. Daniel thought that this new change was acceptable, so after thinking about it, he knew it was okay to consider this proposal. Frederick walked towards the car he was looking at and said, If the committee needs a sponsor, my company can be of help, and if they accept the proposal for two divisions, it could reach more people. I don't know, lately, karate has declined in viewership, and that really scares us, it's probably due to influence, I'm sure that would change in the future. Then, if that's all, I have to attend to other customers, Daniel pointed backward and smiled kindly. I'll take this car. Frederick pointed to the Ford Mustang Boss 429 and said, I'll give it to my son if he wins the tournament. Of course, if he doesn't, I'm afraid I'll give it to him when he graduates from college. Daniel charmingly smiled knowing that someone would take that expensive card that caused a discussion with his wife. No one could afford such an expensive car, and when he thought he would have to send it to an auction, a buyer came to his door. I'll prepare the paperwork. Daniel said as he invited Frederick to the reception area. This wasn't a very lively place, and Frederick made sure to pave the way for his son to win everything he could on his own merits. It's true that he hadn't thought much about it, but if, somehow, Devin participates, and she has to face Dash, things could get complicated because of the affection they have for each other. Alright, Dash, now you won't have any excuses. Frederick murmured with a slight smile. Thank you for your purchase, we'll make the changes you requested and send it to your home as soon as it's finished. Daniel said, holding a bonsai tree. I also hope you make changes in the tournament. Call me if you need a sponsor, and I would be happy to help take this tournament to the next level. Daniel nodded, but he wasn't feeling good about the vibes Frederick was giving him, so he would prefer to consider that in the next committee meeting. Here, don't forget your bonsai tree, it will surely look good in your son's room. Daniel said as he handed the tree to Frederick. For some reason, he likes sakura trees more, but I appreciate your gesture. Frederick smiled and left the car dealership. Are you saying they'll participate in a karate tournament? Dash, who had called three, had just learned the news. Yes Mr. Han has decided to train me, so I'll participate in the tournament, as long as they stop bothering me. Dre responded while sharing this great news with a friend. You'll have to fight against many, I'm learning Kung Fu, so I could be a reinforcement, like Batman and Robin. I have some things to do, but I could participate in that tournament and, by the way, visit China. Dash said, thinking about what that tournament would be like. Are you serious? Coming to China would be crazy, but it would be amazing if you came and participated in the tournament. I'll tell Mr. Han, he'll surely be much more at ease if someone familiar participates. Send me the tournament date, I'll travel a few days earlier, and together we'll give those guys bothering you a beating. We have to show them the American style. See you. After hanging up the call, Dash thought about what the tournament would be like and smiled, feeling excited. In a place near Devin's house, Dash had asked his father for a space to set up a training gym suitable for them, and to consider it as a potential business location in the future. Right near this location was an artificial forest, making it a suitable place for various workouts. After some minor renovations, it became their training ground from now on. 
This place seemed to have been a yoga center that had gone out of business due to poor sales, so it was clean and extremely spacious to set up the gym, or in this case, the dojo. In this case, as they were focusing on kung fu, they needed some suitable equipment, so they gradually started buying it. What surprised Ash was his father's unconditional support when it came to kung fu, so that slight misunderstanding he had with his father was gradually easing. But at that moment, Mr. Kim was overseeing a sparring match under specific conditions. You must be faster, show no mercy, and use your fighting skills. Mr. Kim shouted as he observed the development of the confrontation between Dash and Devon. Dash's limitations when fighting Devon were very clear, he didn't want to face a friend, let alone hurt her. So, when he sparred with her, he mainly practiced defense. That's why Mr. Kim decided that Devon should try to hit him. Only in this way could Dash's defense improve to an acceptable level for the competition. Hum. 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 At this point, Dash was only deflecting Devon's attacks, while focusing on finding ways to attack her without causing much harm. The nervousness he usually felt in fights disappeared, his aura was very natural as he dodged. Aren't you going to attack me? I was just seeing how aggressive you become in the attack. Now that I know, be prepared. Dash assumed a standard kung fu stance and raised his arms. Devon smiled, she knew that Dash restrained himself in combat with her, but she still wanted to show him that he shouldn't underestimate her too much. So, she ran towards him, and when they were at a close distance, she raised her right foot to kick his head. At that moment, Dash saw everything in slow motion, and when his brain processed the information, he slid, grabbing Devon's left foot, and attacking her only supporting leg. Ah. Right where Dash attacked, there was a vulnerable point, causing her to fall on the mat. When she tried to get up, she realized that a fist was near her face. What was that takedown? Devon's eyes widened in surprise because she doubted how Dash received her kick, but didn't hurt him at all. Some jiu-jitsu moves Dash wasn't just fooling around, his main goal was the tournament that would take place in China, not the karate one. That's why he was preparing with many special techniques. Mr. Kim smiled slightly, then extended his hand and said, Very well, everyone gather around and listen. If both of you want to win in the karate tournament, the first thing you must do is learn to score points, because it's not a fight to determine who is the strongest, but who is the most strategically intelligent. And we win by just overpowering them with strength. Devon looked at Dash, who had told her that he had to be strong, because strength was everything in the China tournament, but that was Kung Fu, not Karate. That's the problem, you don't know the rules of the Karate tournament. Mr. Kim smiled and said, Firstly, a competitor will receive a penalty if they perform a striker kick with excessive force or without control. In another situation, if a competitor intentionally or unintentionally leaves the combat area, they can be given a penalty. It's crucial for competitors to stay within the designated boundaries of the combat area throughout the entire match. Dash understood the rules of the fight, the correct example of a foul is executing a poorly performed technique that could harm the opponent. Different scoring zones within the combat area must also be marked. These zones may vary depending on the competition categories, but generally include points for strikes to areas such as the torso, side, head, and, in some cases, the legs. Since you know where to attack, usually these lines are defined by specific colors on the tatami. So, to win, we just need to be faster and more flexible. Dash said, understanding what he had to do in the karate tournament. Devon nodded, knowing what she had to do, she had been training for over three months, so her kicks were the best, and that's what she had been focusing on lately. Devon, go to the dummy and train your kicks. Take advantage of how flexible you are and try to score points with your kicks. We'll work on blocks after that. In the meantime, I'll practice with Dash. Mr. Kim pointed to different training dummies, and Devon chose one called Wang Chu, which was the best for practicing kicks. Do you think we can win sir? Dash asked, being more sincere with Mr. Kim, he nodded after seeing Devon's long kicks. Upon hearing the question, Mr. Kim said, You are strong, fast, and agile. The same goes for Devon. Both of you can leverage your not-so-tall bodies to defeat opponents who will surely underestimate you at first. Perhaps only Kim knew this, but Devon adapted very well to combat, and she had been demonstrating that in the three months he had been teaching her. She adapts quickly, is cautious, and doesn't need much teaching to execute moves decently. Dash, on the other hand, was very good, and best of all, he didn't know it. And Mr. Kim had no intention of dragging it out, only this way he wouldn't underestimate his enemies, and would consider training in other things. There are students better than them, that's true, with much more experience and larger builds, but if they demonstrated everything they learned here, both came out as winners. Let's practice strikes, don't hold back, and come at me with everything you have. Mr. Kim said, holding two pads for striking. Yes Mr. Kim. Higher pump. Faster pump. Pump. Much more precise pump. 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 Devon struck the dummy forcefully, her kicks were high and fast, always maintaining her distance with an imaginary opponent she had been creating to always stay in control. She had slowly lost the fear of the blows she might receive, that's what she had been practicing with Dash while he improved his blocks, and she improved her attacks. 
Although both of them didn't want to hurt each other due to the affection they had, each was improving in some special aspects by facing each other, which was much better than even regular training. I've always been holding back pain and shrinking within myself. I must unleash it all and use it to win, murmured Devin as she hit the dummy with increasing force. The more she thought about her weakness, the angrier Devin felt, and her kicking style became even more aggressive. She knew that her aggressiveness alone wasn't enough to overcome experience, so they needed to increase their speed, and find a way to surprise their opponents. Every time she trained, she felt good. She had understood what Dash meant when he mentioned wanting to see how far he could push his body. Many may not appreciate the body, but she believed it was incredibly fantastic to exert her strength and improve in something many deemed impossible. She still had a lot to improve, but it would be incredible if, at some point, she could participate in tournaments and see how far she could go. It was not only fun, but the day felt much longer by practicing all day. It was precisely for this reason that she started learning Kung Fu. Since her youth, she believed that fights were not entirely necessary. Still, when she fought alongside Dash in that alley, she felt an excitement she had never felt before, so she decided to give it a try. You'll go far with your kicks Miss Lee. No one will expect your results in the tournament. Mr. Kim, who had just finished training with Dash, approached Devin and admired her skill with kicks. Is that enough to win? Of course not. You would win first place if you fight that way. Mr. Kim said calmly. Oh Devin's face became even angrier, and she instinctively began kicking more. Do you know why Dash took you down with that low kick? Mr. Kim approached to give a lesson to his female student. Why couldn't I dodge it? Incorrect. Mr. Kim shook his head and added, You lost because the enemy knows your movements. I've been observing your kicks, and in less than 30 seconds, he could counter your moves by targeting a point. So, what should I do not to lose that way? Devin stopped, looked at her teacher, and asked with much more attention. As it's too late to learn defense, and knowing that your specialty is kicks, we'll start learning feints, and you'll focus only on scoring points, not causing damage. Mr. Kim said as he approached the training dummy. Watch closely and learn. Mr. Kim raised his guard, his hands covered his head, and he began to take small jumps, looking at the training dummy, as if it were his enemy. Devin then saw how Mr. Kim moved his arm towards the dummy's head, but stopped halfway and then, with the help of the jumps and hip movement, kicked back with his right foot towards the dummy's stomach. That was incredible. Devin got excited at seeing that kick that was simply brilliant and very intelligent. Many may not appreciate what Mr. Kim had just done, but in a real confrontation, if that faint kick hits the opponent, it would cause them to be out of the fight. This first feint is what we'll work on for the rest of today's training. Get ready and spar with me. Yes Master Kim. Devin got excited about that incredible kick, she had improved her speed, strength, and flexibility, and she had learned special kicking techniques. However, feints, in this case, were unique styles to deceive the enemy. After training for a few more hours, Devin ended up exhausted, feeling her leg muscles burning. After practicing the first feint technique a lot, she understood that by using this kick, she would prepare her rivals to avoid her kicks that were similar. Considering that, she knew she would have the advantage, as she could play with her opponent's mind, clearly faking a feint only to land a hit with her arms that wasn't a feint, and thus win the fight. In karate, she would have the advantage as the enemy would have no more than three chances to figure out her fighting style, and she only needed to score points. How did it go? Dash handed Devin a sports drink and sat next to her while taking a selfie. What are you doing? Devin directed her attention to the camera in Dash's hands and asked a bit confused. Memories, we'll need photos to remember how our legend begins, Dash said while taking a few more pictures with Devin. It seems like you didn't train much, are you even tired? Dash smiled and said, I'm beaten, let's go back to our homes, and remember to take a cold shower, that's just what I need. A week after finding a suitable location to open a personal dojo, so that Devin wouldn't have to go to Dash's house every day and could be closer to her home, the designs for the two uniforms had been decided. Shall we call ourselves Sakura Kai or Sakura Bushido? Devin and Dash sat in a secluded office within the general dojo, debating which name for the place they should choose. Knowing that dojos from all over the valley would be invited to the karate competition, and not wanting to join one that could limit their kung fu training, Dash had concluded to create a unique place to share his vision of martial arts. For the new dojo's story, Dash had chosen the Sakura tree because it was the last thing he could see before dying, and also had a beautiful meaning. First, we have to choose the name, either one is fine then, if both are fine, let's go with Sakura Bushido. Devin, who had been silent, chose the name. She liked how it sounded, and besides, the meaning behind the name was what made it more incredible. For this dojo, Sakura symbolizes life and death as well as beauty and violence. As for Bushido, that is the code of moral principles taught to knights in ancient Japan. This code is not based on any character, no matter how renowned, nor any human individuality, no matter how brilliant. For ancient samurais, the cherry blossom symbolized blood, but also the fragility and transience of life, associated with the sacrifice and life of the samurais. 
In that sense, belonging to this dojo must be something much deeper than choices that can be taken lightly, but rather something that becomes a way of life from that moment on. When they chose the name, Dash sent it to his father, and after that, they started looking at the logo they would use for this place. Before anything else, they had to choose the logo so that it could be printed on the respective two uniforms they would use. We'll have two types of uniforms, one for karate and the other for kung fu, so I suggest we choose these two. Devin pointed to the computer screen with two logos that she liked. Whichever was chosen for each uniform would be perfect for them. Dash nodded upon seeing the logos, which were similar but defined by color, and seeing the Sakura tree in the center of the logos, he felt they were suitable for their uniforms. Now what? What do you mean? Devin pointed to the vast space and asked, Are you thinking of just the two of us training in this place forever, right? Of course not. We'll promote ourselves when we win championships in both Kung Fu and Karate. The confident look appeared on Dash's face, expressing his absolute certainty that they might become great in the future. Upon hearing this, Devin knew it made sense, so she said nothing more. It was true that the ideal plan was to open their doors once they were promoted in the karate competition happening in a few months. We have to consider that the dojo's design won't be as it is now. Although we train here, the workers will remodel this entire place, and also plant a sakura tree in the backyard. Hey, doesn't your father mind spending so much money on this place? What if everything goes wrong? How will you manage then? Devon also wanted to pay for her classes, but Dash, being a good friend, told her that she would be a partner in this dojo instead of a student, and there was nothing to worry about. She doesn't know how much has been spent on this place, but the money dedicated to remodeling, uniforms, training tools, and more are very costly. The fact that Dash's dad supports his idea is one thing, but paying for all of this is something she doesn't understand. Well, my father sees this as a business that could grow, so he gave me a loan that I'll pay back in the future. Dash explained the deal his father had made with him to support him in this place. Devin frowned, didn't want to dwell on the details, and asked, So, what if this place fails? My father said he'd kick me out of the house once I turn 18. It's not a big deal when you think about it that way. Dash stood up and began cleaning the spacious office. We'll play some computers in this place, we may not be quantity, but we'll certainly stand out in the quality of our arts. Devin's eyes stared at Dash, who had just told her his brilliant deal, and by the way he said it, she was sure that he would be kicked out of the house if this place wasn't successful. Dash, on the other hand, opened a box of chocolates and began posing in front of a huge mirror. His body had grown a lot from training, so he started looking at Devin with proud eyes. I'll grow too, just a bit slower Devin knew exactly the implications of Dash, who said everything with his gaze. I really don't mind if you don't grow, I'll always be by your side like an unmovable pine tree. Dash handed the box of chocolates to Devin and changed the subject, by the way, when's your birthday? Have you forgotten? Just to remind. Dash felt a chill run down his spine and sat in front of Devin. Relax, I don't bite I know, even though you're aggressive, you're not brutal. That means no matter how bad you can get, you wouldn't hurt me. Plop. Dash, who was smiling amusingly, was hit with a chocolate on the head. The impact sounded hollow, making him turn his head toward Devin. Do you want me to teach you some jujitsu moves? I can do that, not without receiving a few kicks from your amazing partner first. Devin ate a chocolate and awaited Dash's move. Well, I was a bit bored just now. Dash jumped off his chair and slid across the desk in front of him, catching Devin's clothes easily. Dash exerted force with both hands trying to pull Devin toward him, but she put her knee on his chest, preventing him from getting closer, and grinned mischievously. It seems you don't have any moves, and you ran out of legs tap tap. Tap tap. At the moment Dash and Devin were in a somewhat ambiguous position, footsteps were heard outside the room, and Mr. Kim, who entered, asked while reviewing some documents, Have you seen the gardener? When Mr. Kim heard no response, he looked up, and what he saw left him speechless. Are you two kissing? Dash, who was in a resistant struggle with Devin, turned his back, moving the wheelchair at the same time, and saw Mr. Kim with a shocked expression. Who's kissing, the gardener? Idiot, he's referring to us, get off me. Devin pushed Dash forcefully, who still held her, and only then did he react. Oh no, we were just playing to see who could endure more. Dash waved his hands, trying to explain the situation, but from Mr. Kim's expression, it seemed like it didn't work. With endurance games, what a curious way to play now that I see the gardener isn't around here, I'll go to the back, so you can continue with your thing, Devin didn't try to say anything, she really didn't care anymore what others thought of them kissing with Dash. In the end, it didn't matter, and she wouldn't worry about it. Well, that was unexpected Dash smiled slightly, feeling butterflies in his stomach, and asked, By the way, aren't you curious to know what kissing feels like? I'll kill you now. Devin could now endure whatever anyone said about them, but with Dash, she could get revenge, so she immediately started chasing him. Dash was surprised, we're young, we should at least be interested in those things a bit, if this girl approached him in this way, Dash should take it as either punishment or favor. 
Under the influence of how it would feel to kiss Devon, the one who stayed in a trance, received a powerful kick to the head, and was sent flying against an old wall that was about to be demolished. As soon as they finish demolishing the walls that will be replaced, I want us to start with the priority areas, said Mr. Kim, who was talking with the workers. Boom. But at that moment, a loud crash was heard, and everyone saw how Dash had rolled out of the wall they were about to collapse. Everyone was in shock seeing that young man being thrown out of the wall, and they all looked at the man they sensed was the teacher of this place. For God's sake, your students are brutal, Mr. Kim felt a tingling and guilt at the same time, because he thought this was due to him seeing something about the relationship of those kids. He saw Devin leaving the office a little nervous and said, you, go home before you break a bone. Dash, surprised at how fragile the wall was, got up and said in a robotic manner, I think I broke a disc in my spine, Devin narrowed her eyes and said, if that were true, you wouldn't be able to walk. It's sarcasm, girl. When will you stop falling for my silly traps? Let's go for ice cream, I want to break the diet. Dash and Devon left the dojo as if nothing had happened, leaving all the workers astonished. My wife is a lioness, but she's definitely never thrown me through a wall those two, if they fight when they're older, they'll end up destroying the house. Haha, <laughs> it's a blessing that they're together and not with someone else, they could end up killing someone. Hahaha. <laughs> Mr. Kim smiled abnormally, looking at his two only students searching for injuries on Dash's body, but seeing him walk calmly, he put aside his concerns. On the same night, after training muscle memory exercises, Dash began making a list of things he remembers to make long-term investments. Some companies were known, a few were not, but Dash now needed some money to secure his uncertain future, to get married, and to retire. Moreover, considering that he might be interested in some significant part of his life in Kung Fu, he would need something to live on, as he couldn't be asking his father for money every time he had the chance. Well, now it's necessary to know a few more things and obviously have money Dash thought about these problems after resting on his bed, and unknowingly fell asleep. Dash was lying in a bathtub filled with cold water, with ice cubes floating. The cold stimulated his muscles so much that all the accumulated fatigue gradually disappeared as the minutes passed. Pressing his throat while enduring the pain of the cold, he felt really good because all the pain he complained about before, was immediately overshadowed by the cold. As time passed, Dash's palm began to move on its own, and a new sensation filled his body, imagining over and over a simulation in a battle. So, that's what Mr. Kim meant by hitting the enemy's vital points with force, as he imagined the enemy's weak points, Dash's face immediately showed understanding. He had been thinking a lot about how to improve as quickly as possible, and Mr. Kim gave him a hint about it. In his imagination, Dash was on a mat, striking a training dummy in the weakest areas of the human body, and obviously allowed in a karate tournament. Hmm, I'll surely give a good result if the enemy underestimates me, and only with good technique, I can reach the final. Over the years in the hospital, Dash had memories created by his shattered mind, and he believed he was the only one with bad luck. He could see all those people feeling fine and wasting all the opportunities they had. He filled with fury of feeling weak, and the most lamentable thing of all was that he could never prove that he was better. Now Dash felt better than the people in his living environment itself, he should feel this way if he wants to go far, as a weak mentality would not serve him at all to achieve everything he wants. However, it was a very short time to show all his qualities and how far he could go. But knowing that in the Kung Fu tournament, someone like Dre Parker might face him, he was filled with a competitive feeling, and wanted to know if he could defeat those people. Dash sighed deeply as his mind drifted. This consuming mental state, if not noticed, was worrisome, so he decided to get out of the shower and change quickly. Unfortunately, even though he had the chance to live a new life, not everything was so easy, but he believed he would progress slowly. That's why he chose Kung Fu for its complexity and the focus he should have to stand out. Due to his little time for the karate tournament, Dash focused on the Northern Dragon Kung Fu style to achieve the best results. What he needed was everything that the Northern Dragon Kung Fu style had, and Mr. Kim was an expert in that discipline. In terms of fighting, martial artists of the Northern Dragon Kung Fu style would be considered counter-attackers, waiting for their opponent to strike first, and then reacting by attacking their weakest point. For this, Dash knew that many would underestimate him, and that's when he would strike at the enemy's weak points. Attacking first would be foolish when there will be students bigger than me, Dash clenched his fists. He understood that he possibly wasn't the best fighter of his age, but if he concentrated, he knew he could take on many talented rivals, and he was definitely sure he wasn't the weakest. Possessing talent is the best thing in the world, but if talent and hard work are mixed, the world will be in my hands. Although Dash is still young, he clearly understood this principle, and what he wanted most was to enhance his entire body to the highest possible quality. Having dried his already long hair, Dash kept his eyes closed in front of the mirror. Because it was night and his parents would be back soon, he focused on having dinner with them. In his previous life, he had siblings at the age of 12, so it was possible that this would happen again in this life, and there would be many more things to pay attention to after that. 
It seems that now I will meet my future younger siblings. Dash murmured softly as he left his room and headed to the living room. Elena was sitting, looking at some things on a tablet. Technology was advancing rapidly, but Dash, who was very aware of how far it had come, didn't pay attention to those things. You're home early, aren't you training today? Elena's question was subtle, but revealed a part of the way she believed to connect with her son. Dash sat down and said, it's good to rest from time to time. There wasn't much to talk about with his mother, Dash couldn't open his heart to her, and that mostly made him spend his time with her in silence. As for your studies, it's a surprise that you've improved your grades, exercise might also stimulate my intelligence. I'm much better than before, but it's also because I study and do homework with Devin. Elena finished what she was doing and stood up. She knew that Dash acted this way because they had never spent much time at home, but that was better. Her son demonstrated all the qualities that someone of his class required. Having that somewhat uncomfortable conversation with his mother, Dash knew perfectly well that it would never improve, but that was okay. It would be impossible for him to mend this relationship with them, but at least it was bearable, and he didn't truly hate them for abandoning him in that hospital. The burden he could have been for them might have caused them many problems. Without being selfish, Dash could understand many of the reasons his father stopped visiting, and why his mother only came once every few months. Dash all pathetic, he could also understand that this was their consolation to live peacefully in this house. The world is terrifying, so he couldn't run away from home as he was just a kid, and to live alone, he needed money, which he didn't have. You're thinking a lot, are you nervous about the tournament? Frederick had noticed his silent son and directed a more attentive look at him. Dash smiled subtly and said, not to brag or be arrogant, but I have the tournament under control, it's just that my friend in China claims to be bullied at school, and to resolve that, he would also participate in the Kung Fu tournament that will take place after the karate one. Hasn't his mother found out that her son is being bullied by someone else? Elena took a sip of water and said, it must be difficult for her, being able to raise a child, and work is something complicated to handle at the same time. At least she didn't abandon him. When Dash said this, his parents stared at him, and that's when he clarified, I mean, as far as I know, many mothers abandon their children to rebuild their lives that have been shaped by numerous bad decisions. Isn't that more common than it should be? Elena understood what her son meant and pointed out, she is a good mother, maybe working and taking care of her son is the only thing that keeps her stable. Frederick, who wanted to stop talking about other people during dinner, changed the subject and said, I have received the details of the dojo you will open. You know I will manage it very superficially, and you will be responsible for making it successful. Yes, father. Moreover, all the progressive profits will repay what you have invested in that place. Dash responded very discreetly, his tone and aura always remained as refined as possible, because that was how he had been taught. The profits from that dojo won't cover the expenses in it until many years later, but we are satisfied that you are aware of everything you have been given for your dream, and we hope you don't disappoint us. Elena was a straightforward woman who had sacrificed foolish dreams to achieve success in life, making her what she is now. In life, many believe that pursuing dreams is valuable, but usually, they all live in the realities of the world. Elena does not regret the decision her mother made for her back then, to attain all the wealth she could now have, but at least she didn't want to do that to Dash, who seemed very interested in Kung Fu. For her, her son's success or failure is ephemeral since she has worked enough, and will continue to work to see in her son all the success she could not obtain. If you manage to extend your fame in China, our liquor business might enter that country and succeed, but remember that you must win no matter what happens. Frederick would not do this for himself but for his son. I understand what you mean, the image of the Sakura Bushido Dojo could become important, and in that way, collaborate with brands, mainly from your company, to obtain unimaginable profits. I am surprised that you know about business. Elena looked at her son and nodded with satisfaction, she had a good son and not garbage like her younger sister's child, who was a headache. He is our son, he couldn't be normal if we didn't educate him. Dash smiled slightly, and only he thought that all that knowledge was owed to movies and TV shows. After all, that was the only thing he could enjoy in his past life. At night, Dash practiced muscle memory movements just to refresh his mind from tense thoughts, and after releasing all that stress, he went straight to bed. Having received the final results of the uniforms that would be black with gold, Dash smiled upon seeing the dojo's logo and his name marked in a bright color. When he got the results, he sent them to Devon, and they both talked until late at night before falling asleep. The tournaments were approaching, and Dash felt he was getting ready, wanting to know if he had talent, or if all his victories were due to hard work. In the middle of his room, Dash could truly feel immersed in a flat sensation of fluid movements, just as he wanted to execute them without making mistakes. As his feet slid across the floor, a series of rapid punches were delivered at intervals. I've been improving my speed, but I think I'm much better now. The sudden sensation of speed from his attacks made Dash feel in tune with his body. The seven points of pain are the best techniques of the style I'm handling. Dash soon began practicing punches. 
He watched his complete movements in a large mirror, and began adjusting his position, thus improving the technique he had learned little by little. Staying in the center of the room, Dash practiced numerous movements without making much noise, wearing a serious expression. Looking at the training dummy he had exclusively in his room, he approached and began hitting it faster and faster, until his hands began to numb. Thump. 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 When he finally set a speed, the red knuckles of his hands demonstrated the force with which he was hitting. Although my progress may be slow, the advances are very evident, and there's no doubt that I am better than many. Dash murmured to himself, satisfied with the punches. Progress in the fighting style puzzled Dash. It was a completely new style, but it was much better and adapted to his needs without ignoring its properties. Should I put on bandages? As Dash punched, he saw how the condition of his knuckles worsened, but this was progress for which, according to Mr. Kim, there would be a reward later. Swallowing the pain, Dash began hitting with open palms, and the loud sounds began to be heard more clearly in the room. Just as he was about to continue, he suddenly stopped and walked to the shower to wipe off the sweat before heading to school. I have changed a lot, these muscles are just from hard work. Dash began to look at his body with some admiration, thinking about what happened last time, and this time he decided to stop. Going down the stairs, he found the house empty except for the workers, and got into the car that would take him to school. This routine had been repeated for a long time, and now he considered it normal. With all the things he had done in the last few days, he ignored the fact of checking out good dojos in the area to visit them later with Devon, and he didn't research much about the previous karate tournaments in the valley. I wonder if I'm doing it right, Dash murmured these words as he looked at his reflection in the car window. When he got out of the car, he ignored some stares from other students, and instead walked straight to his classroom without paying attention to anyone else. Dash. Looking towards the source of the voice, Dash saw Devin waving at him from afar, and approached her with a similar smile. There's a month left for the karate tournament, have you thought about how amazing it would be if we win? At this point, they should be considering sending invitations to all the dojos, but considering that we're not known, no one might invite us. Devon had been imagining how many girls she could defeat, and prove that with a little training time, she could sweep the competition regardless of the obstacles during the first months of suffering and learning. Walking towards the classroom, Dash handed a protein bar to Devon and said, We've been very confident about this, we didn't consider the fact that we'll face stronger and more experienced rivals than us. That's what we've trained for. Just imagine if we win with these little flexible tricks, the competition would be a joke, Devon couldn't get out of her mind what she would do if she won. After class, we'll have the uniforms, there will be four in total, and the colors are more than incredible. Dash entered the classroom and sat next to Devon, his desk companion. Dojo Sakura Bushido rest. Mr. Kim shouted, looking at Dash and Devon bathed in sweat after an intense combat simulation training that lasted more than 10 minutes. The current Dash had grown even more, and Devon was not far behind, she had developed both physically and mentally. The days without training were something she couldn't ignore, so together with Dash, they prepared to participate in the training that admitted the female division for competition. Mr. Kim stood in front of his students and said, Things have gone much further than I had thought. Both of you have adapted to the combat techniques you feel most comfortable with, and have made giant strides. From now on, besides training, I have nothing more to teach you. Nothing more. Devon was surprised after hearing this declaration. It's time for each of you to develop your kung fu in the way that suits you best, in addition to learning more in the doctrines that you still lack, which is something you can implement in your training. Dash, who had opened his training report to wipe off sweat, smiled instinctively. During the last month, his combat experience had improved a lot because both he and Devon trained with Mr. Kim, who was very skilled in combat. The techniques he used had leveled up, and he was sure they were sufficient to fight decently in the tournament, even though he wasn't sure of winning, because he didn't know his rivals. He blindly believed that at least one of them would win. But the holidays approaching, Dash knew perfectly well that the time had come to test himself, and see if that burning desire inside him when he was lying on a hospital bed, had been enough to become strong in the time he had lived in this new life. As you no longer require more instructions, what you should do from now on is train muscle memory movements and avoid heavy exercises, so that you are in the best physical condition. Dash, who understood this perfectly, asked, Mr. Kim, what do you think are our chances now? They will be the surprise of the place, don't forget that nobody knows you, let alone your great skills that you have been acquiring over the months. Mr. Kim replied as he bowed to greed and left. Then see you in the competition Master Kim. Remember that we haven't learned about weapon techniques yet in case it's ever needed in karate. Devon turned her head and asked, why the hell do you want a weapon? I mentioned that you would look amazing with the black sword I gave you for your birthday. Would we participate in a competition where weapon techniques need to be shown? Points could be vital in that kind of competition. Dash walked towards the second floor where there were private showers. That sword. How do you give a girl a sword as a birthday gift? Then what do you want? You put aside debates, so either I give you food you can enjoy or something you can use in the future. 
Devin smiled without Dash looking at her, and she walked to the female showers. But before she left, he shouted, You might consider showering next to me. We could share soap, and you could help me clean my back, since I can't reach some places. Adolescence is bringing serious problems to your mental state. Stop mentioning silly jokes and hurry up, as we could go to the movies before it gets dark. Fine Dash thought, remembering Dree, the enamored guy, incredible how he enjoys himself in a country where everyone speaks Chinese. The current dojo, now remodeled with two floors, features a modernized interior with advanced training equipment, including practice dummies for kung fu and karate, that Dash had tried very frequently. In addition to exercise tools, what stood out the most were the weapons on the walls, which were not just for decoration, although most of them were securely fastened. On the second floor were the showers, but since there was also a place to train, it made it an incredible place. Located near an agricultural forest, the natural breeze creates a pleasant atmosphere, offering a unique and serene place for practice and learning. When Dash came out, he wore a two-piece set of clothes with marked purple letters on the dojo, and Devon wore the same. For her, starting to promote the place where they would receive new students was important from now on. You seem even more interested in having more students than me. Is it really that bad spending all that time together with me? Dash acted in a way that annoyed Devon, but she never told him anything, so this was his method to test her patience. Remember that your father can kick you out of the house. I don't want you to become a vagabond if you can't pay your debts, that's very dangerous. Devin pretended to be concerned as she caressed Dash's hair that he had just combed. Hey, if we win, shall we try beer? Addictions are bad, we'll try some alcohol when we're at least 15. Devin rode a scooter and followed Dash, who was staring at her. You lost last time I may have lost the race, but I will never lose entirely unless I give up Devin smiled and said, then catch up to me, and if you do, I'll treat you to popcorn. They say when you anticipate something, sleep eludes you, but for Dash, who had faced death, the last thing he had in this life was nervousness, fear, or that strange sensation of not being able to meet the expectations he set for himself. That's why, a day before, Dash, along with Devon's family, celebrated a small meal where they ate grilled chicken, fish, pork, and bought numerous treats they usually didn't indulge in, because both were highly focused on the tournament. But before that, Dash, Devon, and her family traveled to many pleasant places to spend the morning. They had invited Mr. Kim, but he declined, as he wanted to spend time with his own family. In the corner of a large tree, Dash stood, watching the sunset, feeling infinitely grateful for life giving him a second chance. He didn't know if there was a test, some purpose he had to fulfill, but he was definitely seizing every moment, regardless of what others might say. Devon had felt that Dash had changed radically since he started mentioning Kung Fu. She couldn't quite notice it at first, but as they interacted with him, she knew something was different. Over these months, she discovered that Dash had been acting as he pleased. There was no one who could make him change his mind about things he had set for himself. The Dash she knew was very indifferent to many things, didn't interact with anyone in class, and, due to losing a year of studies, was much more mature than others. Maybe that's what made her able to talk to him calmly. They were both interested in similar things, but there were differences that she liked. The first time they argued for hours was when both were thinking about a brilliant scene involving argument scenes in movies. Dash had chosen there will be blood, and she chose Fargo. After a long time discussing why one should agree with the other, they ended up watching both movies, and concluded that both scenes were brilliant. Isn't nature incredible? It's as subtle as a gentle breeze and as disastrous as a fire tornado have I told you why I put so much effort into physical training? Dash looked at his friend and asked calmly. Other than seeing how far you can go, what else haven't you told me? Devon sat next to Dash and was interested in what he wanted to tell her. Dash looked at the flower in his hand and said, That time when I couldn't breathe, I felt weak, so weak that every breath I took cost me much more than any training Mr. Kim has put us through so far. When I felt that weakness, I thought, what do I want most? Being weak like this beautiful flower, all I wanted was to know how strong I could become. After that, I became interested in learning some martial art that would take me a long time to master. As Dash explained this story, altered to share a hidden part of himself with Devon, she smiled, feeling closer to him. She had discovered a new emotion when she got into a fight for the first time, so she thought, why not give it a try? And now, a night before participating in a tournament at the age of 11, she believed she was in some kind of fantasy tale. Hey, it's not time to get sentimental tomorrow, we'll kick everyone's ass without exception, got it. Devon felt that Dash's behavior was a bit melancholic and changed the subject. Standing up, Dash nodded, looked at Devon, and said, I'll get you that male championship trophy, I hope you dedicate the female one to me. Devon smiled excitedly and said, in victory and defeat, we'll always be together, like an inseparable team. In the distance, Devon's parents watched their daughter's charming interaction, and they said nothing. They didn't want to tarnish this beautiful moment for their daughter and Dash, who made a beautiful team. Do you think they'll both win? Zoe looked at Zach and asked while thinking about the tournament tomorrow. 
All I know is, pity the opponents of Devon for the next year, because if she's this good at karate now, I can't imagine what she'd do with another year of training. It seems we'll have our first warrior in the family, tomorrow we must leave our throats supporting them. We'll definitely do that. California, San Fernando Valley All Valley Sports Arena at the entrance of the legendary place. There were banners everywhere for the 45 ND Annual Championship Tournament, attributed to the year in which it was being held. After the All Valley Committee gathered for the annual meeting and discussed how the competition would be held, Daniel LaRusso proposed a change that completely revolutionized the annual competitions, dividing the competition into two divisions, male and female. When it was known that there could be two championships, many women who trained in karate, but never had the opportunity to enter a tournament, signed up to experience the excitement of a tournament that had been held for more than 50 years. And that inevitably drew the attention of many more people, as they had never before heard of a female competition. At least, the majority of the place was filled with male spectators. In a high position, Daniel LaRusso looked at the filled stadium and said, I could feel that was a good idea, thanks to Mr. Frederick's sponsorship and the proposal for two championships, it attracted much more attention. I heard your daughter will participate. Is she as good at karate as her father? Daniel, upon hearing this question, smiled slightly and said, I had let it go, but when she heard there would be a female championship, she wanted to try it, so I trained her last minute. I just hope she has fun, and I regret not being able to be here with you as I have a daughter to support. Don't worry about us, we wish you good luck and hope for the best. Daniel nodded as he headed to the area where the dojos were gathering, and in the front row of the crowd, he saw Frederick. He wanted to go and greet him, but due to very little time, he didn't get the chance. I wonder where his son is, I suppose I'll know if he qualifies, Daniel thought as he looked for his daughter, who should be with his wife right now. As soon as Dash had changed, he saw a very familiar man and murmured, where have I seen him before? That man. From what I heard, he's part of the tournament committee, and he was the first fighter to win twice consecutively in this same tournament a long time ago. Devon, who was eating an apple beside Dash, explained to him who Daniel LaRusso was. Dash, knowing the identity of that man, thought, what kind of messed up simulation am I in? There's no doubt that those two worlds are really connected. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been waiting a long time, but finally, we're here dojos from all over the valley have trained for over a year to reach glory in this legendary tournament. Do you want to know who will participate? Very well, for someone like this sensei, the dojo needs no introduction. He burst into the All Valley in 1984 and 1985, and quickly became one of the great surprises of this sport. This year, due to magical and surprising changes in the tournament, Ao we have him back to participate as sensei, and although he has only one fighter, those who know will know that this same sensei fought alone and took glory with his sensei. So they are ready to show that they can achieve glory like they did many years ago. The presenter pointed to the entrance and said, A round of applause for Miyagi do Karate, led by the two-time champion Daniel LaRusso. At that moment, Daniel LaRusso came out with his 10-year-old daughter, who had been learning karate from her father to protect herself from bullies at school, and who wanted to participate after a division for women was opened. The next dojo won the title last year, their story is as big as the history of this tournament, and they were among those who, with their old and legendary senseis, managed to spread karate throughout the valley. Let's welcome Cross Karate. Compared to other dojos, they had more students, enough to be potential winners again, and take the glory of this tournament. The age of the participants ranged from 10 to 18 years, which, for Dash, who was only 12 years old, would make victories challenging. Dojos like Topanga Karate, who were among the participants, had much more chance of winning due to their large numbers, but this was indifferent to Dash. Are you nervous? Devin, who saw his turn approaching, looked at Dash nervously. Me? Not at all. I'll crush any opponent they put in front of me, I just need to get used to the audience, that does make me nervous. Dash sat while looking at both male and female students. And finally, where Sakura leaves bloom like new life in nature, this dojo makes its debut in the All Valley, but as you know, every year new dojos are favors to win, and we'll see if this dojo has what it takes to win this year. Let's welcome the new dojo Sakura Bushido, led by Sensei Kim, who has been training his students for no more than half a year. At the moment their dojo was named, Mr. Kim as their master nodded and walked slowly in the direction he had been indicated. This place gives a much stronger impression as a participant, Devin murmured while looking at all the people cheering not for them, but because the competition was about to begin. Being only two students and still children, many didn't have them on their radar. Some others thought the competition was filled with children, something that happened every day, but none knew what they were about to see from these children they considered indifferent. 
For Dash, this tournament would serve because in China, the pressure would be greater due to the students who should have more capabilities. Facing opponents in karate here didn't seem like a big deal to him, as he remembered how Daniel's matches were. What worried him were those Chinese kids who threw kicks so high they could send those who received them flying. When all the dojos entered, they were assigned places to warm up, and as Sakura Bushido and Miyagi do were small dojos in terms of numbers, both were in the same designated area to give more space to those who needed it. Is there anything we need to know before we start beating all the dojos? Devin touched Ash's slightly long hair and looked at Mr. Kim, who was dressed in a karate uniform like his students. Don't hit too hard by all means, avoid attacking in a way that penalizes you, and remember not to combine techniques that are not allowed in this tournament. This was Mr. Kim's greatest fear, so he reminded his students many times. We'll have it clear. Dash looked at the combat arena and the leaderboard right in front. Men go first, so I'll support you from this side. Devon said while hitting Dash on the shoulder. Will you be my pillow if I lose? Devon smiled and said, I'll kick your ass if you lose to those guys. If that happens, there would be no need to visit China. Dash smiled upon hearing this, and his gaze began to assess all the people who could be a possible obstacle to his triumph in this place. Today, one of these dojos will be crowned as the new champion. Welcome to the 52nd tournament, the first annual All Valley Under 12, enjoy this tournament. It's karate time. While everyone gathered for an inspiring speech, Dash looked at Devon's hair styled in a ponytail, and upon seeing the ribbon headband, he said, Incredible hairstyle, you look more intimidating that way. If you let me tie your hair, you'll probably look the same way. Devon looked at Dash and teased him, thinking that fighting with his hair covering his vision, would make things difficult for him. First, you have to qualify, which means you'll fight until the tournament reaches the final qualification, and it's important not to show your best moves. Mr. Kim took the list of matchups and knew how his students were arranged. So, who goes first? Devon looked at Mr. Kim, who seemed to nod, and a desperate look formed on his face. We'll take turns when they call us, which means both of you will fight, and if we lose here, we won't even make it to the qualifying round, that's right, don't show weakness, and take any opportunity to score points. Mr. Kim said, and just then, someone from the organization approached. Devon Lee faces Ann Berker. Dash Hale faces Billy Lastro. We were called at the same time. Will you be okay without my supervision? Dash licked his lips because they were dry and looked at Devon, trying to provoke her. I'll finish this faster than you. Want to bet? Devon smiled with enthusiasm. She couldn't wait to face someone other than Dash and see how far she had come. When Devon stepped onto the mat, the referee brought them together, and after they greeted each other, he started the match. Oh, here I go this time, she wouldn't face a friend, now she was in front of a rival who was at most three years older than her, so she had to be careful not to receive high kicks. Remembering each kicking movement, she assumed the fighting style stance of the Northern Dragon adapted to karate and smiled provocatively. Her opponent smiled when she saw that there was a girl younger than her in their first match, and after the match started, she ran towards Devon with a smile on her face. But the moment she initiated the fight, Devon, who was barely above the ground, rotated her hips and in a split second, delivered a quick kick to Anne's face. Anne, who had taken the initiative, desperately tried to raise her guard, but Devon's kick was not only fast but also powerful, and broke through the defenses she raised in surprise. Point. Reforming Devon, whose heart was now beating rapidly due to excitement, this time, as soon as they gave her the green light to move, closed the distance between her and Anne, commanding with front kicks. The girl she faced had a flushed face from the blow, so normal fear formed in her battle spirit, and she instinctively began to retreat. After Devon's two front kicks, she noticed this, so the moment she saw that Anne was close to the combat boundary, she jumped and kicked the girl's shoulder with a push kick. Ah. Point. Devon, who had executed a quick turn, returned to her position, her face filled with seriousness as she sought her opponent's gaze and smiled when Anne looked at her. Back to the center. The referee was surprised by Devon's kick, it wasn't normal to have many kicks in a karate fight, because everyone knew it was easier to train close combat. Just one more point Devon clenched her fists, she could sense her opponent's fear, so she didn't plan to ease up at this moment. Fight. When the referee started the melee, she advanced with a kick, but seeing Anne turn around and start throwing straight punches, Devon slipped between her opponent's punches, and landed a clean hit on her chest. Point. 
Seeing that she had won, Devon smiled with joy and knowing that she hadn't been hit even once, she felt much better than she had initially thought. Well done, Devon, you took incredible advantage of the element of surprise. Miss Hakim approached with a towel and handed it to Devon, who had sweated a bit. What about Dash? Look at me, Bo. Look at each other, Bo. Dash looked at his opponent and clenched his hands tightly. The guy he was facing was as big as an adult. Billy was a 15-year-old quite robust guy, so if he wasn't careful, a punch would send Dash out of the combat mat. Ready. Fight. When the referee started the fight, Billy thought it was a joke that they paired him with a kid for the qualifying match, so he advanced slowly. Let me treat you with care. Billy, with his long leg, tried to kick Dash. His apathy had enough strength to take Dash out of the fight, if it hit one of his weak points. Thud. While Dash evaded Billy's first kick, he opened his eyes wide, and upon seeing an opening in his opponent's leg, he turned his body and kicked with great force. The force behind that kick was something even Dash didn't measure, he had thought that due to his opponent's eyes, his blows would be like caresses, so he didn't measure his kick. Thud, ah. But the moment his kick hit Billy's upper leg, he fell to the ground and rolled from side to side while holding the impact area. Move aside. The referee pulled Dash, who was astonished watching the big guy fall with just one of his kicks, out of the way. One kick was enough. Seeing this scene, Dash stood frozen on the side, not knowing what to do. They wouldn't disqualify him for this, right? In karate, if you hit too hard, you might be disqualified. What happened there? He couldn't believe it, just one kick from that kid took down that large karateka, it's insane, bro, you sent him to hell with that kick. Shouted a man who was already drunk. Daniel LaRusso, who had seen his daughter win in the preliminaries, saw a boy knocked down on the ground. Upon realizing that the opponent was the same boy who had been next to him a moment ago, he was surprised. Dash, idiot, did you break his leg? Devon stood next to Daniel just after winning her fight, and watched as the doctors attended to Dash's opponent. She was surprised, admitting that she was excited to see her friend defeat a gigantic rival, but that wasn't the point here. Do you both train in kicks? Daniel looked at Devon, and upon realizing that they belonged to the same Sakura Bushido Dojo, he asked with slight interest. Now knowing Dash's last name, he knew he was Frederick's son, who had bought the expensive car about to be auctioned. He specializes in strikes, I can't tell you what I specialize in because I might have to face your daughter. Devon looked at Daniel, and after seeing Dash's opponent being taken care of by the medics, she ran towards that spot. What's the result? Mr. Kim had learned everything, so after finding Devon, he waited to know what decision the referee would take. It was a legal kick, you shouldn't think too much about it. Devon shouted, looking at the kids from the dojo of the boy, who had just been knocked down by Dash, and glared at them angrily. Check his foot, he must have something hidden. Shouted a Topanga karate girl. Bitch, I'm going to check your mouth and get those ideas out of your head with punches. Devon, who wanted to start the fight right now because that girl was slandering her friend, was stopped by Mr. Kim, who was in chaos. Whenever you're ready, Miss Lee, you must have grown up seeing that you won a fight, but I'll crush you once we fight. I'll break those teeth, bitch. Murmured Devon while whispering to the girl who was barking nonsense. This is crazy. Dash is aware that he kicked in an area where he could hit the leg nerve, but he didn't think it would be as effective as Mr. Kim had said. When the referee spoke with others from the committee, he called the two senseis from each dojo, and Dash approached Devon, as if fearing she would get into a fight. Did you hit him hard? That guy was huge, I thought a normal punch wouldn't beat him, so I wanted to stop him when he started throwing punches at me, Dash explained his point, while seeking the looks of those discussing what would happen. After reaching a decision, the referee looked at Dash and said, ballot point. Since your opponent can't continue, you're the winner, you advance. Yeah, take that, you damn bitch. Devon celebrated the knockout victory and walked alongside the bewildered Dash to another place. Miss Kim was sweating cold, having two monsters in the combat as disciples. It was satisfying, but at the same time, they gave him many problems. Devon's aggressiveness didn't help at all, so after pulling them away, he ordered them to maintain composure. One more fight, and you'll be classified for the round of 16 in each division. Don't do anything crazy and win with harder hits. If I end up with the bitches from Topanga Karate, I can't promise anything. That's my Devon. Dash smiled upon hearing those comments. Dash Hale and Devon Lee, get ready as you will fight in two minutes. When called, Dash bumped fists with Devon, and both headed to their respective places where they were called. 
That's my girl, kick those witches' faces who have spread lies about Dash. Mrs. Zoe supported her daughter from the side. Elena clenched her fist seeing her son about to be hit. This is supposed to be a contact match, but it was still difficult for her to see her son in combat. Did you see that kick? My son was practicing it day and night, non-stop. It's no surprise that he hurt that guy's nerve. Frederick said, sitting next to Mr. Zack. The kids have really advanced to a level in this competition. I don't even want to imagine what a tournament in China would be like, especially in Kung Fu, which is a more open martial art. Zack praised Devin and Dash's results while watching the other fights that were a bit more normal. I contacted the organization of that karate tournament, and I have the date. You should plan a good vacation because Devin will want to go see the matches. Frederick couldn't hide his happiness seeing his son's overwhelming victory. In normal situations, he would be at work, but seeing all the progress his son had made so far, he gave him a chance, and he hadn't disappointed. The fights start again at the same time. This is crazy because we won't be able to support them at the same time. At least they're recording the fights, we can watch the replays later. Dash's current opponent was much more at his level, but he seemed to be faster and more determined in his strikes. Look at me, Bo. Look at each other, Bo. Dash bowed to his opponent and positioned himself to fight. This time, he wouldn't throw punches so quickly as he wanted to maintain control of the fight at all times. Ready? Fight. Dash looked into his opponent's eyes and quickly advanced, delivering a front kick that was dodged by his rival. As Dash closed in on his opponent, the latter attempted a body punch, which Dash evaded using the defense he had been trained in, swiftly countering the attack with a surprising speed. Pump. Point, back to your corners. Said the referee, awarding the point to Dash, who had demonstrated an incredibly superior level. Ready, fight. Dash once again moved quickly toward his opponent, who immediately began throwing front kicks to keep him at bay. However, Dash, observing where he stood, retreated slowly. With Dash on the edge, his rival smiled. Just as he kicked towards Dash's head, Dash seized this moment and attacked, first covering the impact of the kick, and then counter-attacking with a hook kick. Point, 2-0 in favor of Hale. Looking provocatively at his rival, Dash felt all that excitement and directed it towards his fists. Once again, when the referee initiated the kick, he closed the distance and received blows from his opponent. Pump. 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 Evading his rival's strikes and returning them at a moderate speed, Dash faced a fight in which he was not comfortable, so he stepped back. Seeing that his attacks weren't working this time, his body calmed down, and he opened his fighting stance. His rival didn't look confused, but as he was losing the fight, he immediately attacked with anger for losing to a younger boy with obviously less training time. I'll finish this with a faint Dash clenched his fists and opened the fight once more. His punches this time seemed uncontrollable but were fast, catching his rival off guard. However, as he was about to continue attacking his rival clearly, he stopped midway and instead of punching, he used a spinning kick. Pum. This time his kick wasn't strong, but it was brutal enough to surprise his rival and win the match, gaining a point clearly. Point, winner Dash Hale. Said the referee, signaling him as the winner. Good fight. Dash bowed to his rival and quickly left the mat. Just as he was about to ask Mr. Kim how Devon's match was developing, a Topanga girl flew out of the allowed combat zone. Winner Devon Lee. Incredible Dash applauded Devon's overwhelming victory, who, even after winning, still provocatively looked at a rival. An expression of joy appeared on Devon's face as she descended. She, who had surprised her opponents with her short stature, was dethroning her rivals relatively easily. Practicing with you is much more tiring than fighting here. Have you noticed how slow they were? That's because we've been improving our speed to score points. That's the only way we could win back then, but we've improved more than usual in the time we spent training. Dash handed her a water bottle after seeing Devin so excited. While Dash laughed, he saw out of the corner of his eye a man in a white karate suit approaching him, and when he saw his face, he knew who it was. Your fights have been incredible. Congratulations to both of you, who at such a young age have proven to be tough competitors to beat this year. Daniel LaRusso approached with his daughter, who had advanced to the round of 16, and smiled as he greeted them. Mr. LaRusso, I'm Dash, and she's Devin. Your daughter seems to have inherited the excellence of her karate. Dash said while signaling discreetly to Devin not to be too hostile. We'll see which karate is better. Surely, if we reach the final, we'll face each other, unless we meet in the early rounds. Devin smiled falsely and greeted the girl in front of her. 
I'm Samantha LaRusso alright, Sam, you can call me Devin. It would be nice to face each other in the final of our division. Devin extended her hand and greeted Sam more courteously, who seemed a bit shy. I look forward to it too. Good luck until then. Sam was about to leave with her father when Devin suddenly stopped her. What's happening? Daniel also looked at the girl named Devin, who seemed a year younger than his daughter, and listened attentively to what she said. Luck doesn't exist, everything is based on our own talent considering where we come from. There are no accidents either, as they are caused equally by ourselves. If we are aware of our surroundings, nothing would be attributed to luck, especially in a fight where only the skill of each fighter is considered. Dash remained silent and looked at Devin, where did all this profound philosophy come from? You have a point, I'll keep that in mind from now on. After saying goodbye, Sam walked away with her father. Where did you read that? Dash didn't believe any of what Devin had said, so he asked her with his eyes full of questions. I don't remember, but it's not good for anyone to be friends before facing each other, that will only distract us. It's better to be enemies until the tournament is over. Devin said as she combed her hair again. That makes more sense. Dash helped her tie her hair and patiently waited for the other competitors to qualify. After the qualifying matches in the boys' section, Dash would face Anders Stone as his opponent in the round of 16, while Lee would face Krupa. Looking at the leaderboard, the dojos that had qualified formed, and the tournament presenter stood in the center of the mat with a microphone. All right, audience, today we witness great fights, but you haven't seen anything yet because we have reached the quarterfinals. Said the presenter, taking a pause. That means things are about to get very interesting, as out of the 8 boys and 8 girls here, one from each division will be named the champion. At this point, everyone must keep their eyes on the mat. When the presenter initiated the quarterfinals, the first to fight in the male category were Muller against Silva. Aren't you going to watch the fight? Dash, who was checking his cell phone, looked at Devin, who had approached, and put away what he was doing. I've analyzed them enough. As it's now both male and female matches, you should analyze the opponent since you're the next one to fight. Dash looked at Devin, who seemed more excited than he had thought. I'm not worried, I got a girl a year older, so she definitely can be superior to me. Devin said while looking at the qualified women. Daniel's daughter's fighting style is defensive, similar to the Northern Dragon style, but her strikes are slower. If you overwhelm her with kicks and keep your distance, you'll win. I'm sure you'll do it. Devin looked at Sam and nodded, her goal was to win this title, as she would feel a bit bad considering all the training she had gone through for over half a year. Winner, Silva. When the winner was announced, the guy with the last name Silva advanced to the semi-final, which excited Dash even more, as his goal was to win this tournament, and move on to the karate competition to prove to his family that he was ready. Devin, crusher. Dash sat before his friend stepped into the arena. I'll shut that bitch up, she was the one talking about getting you disqualified. Devin stepped into the arena, and after the salute, the match began. Dash's eyes didn't stray from Devin's movements, she was magnificent using kicks and, along with the famous feints she had learned, opponents with little experience couldn't predict them. Point. Within just 10 seconds, Devin had earned a point, and shortly after, the match resumed. Devin's opponent wasn't very tall, making it even easier for the kicks raining in all directions. Pump, pump, pump. As the match unfolded, Devin scored another point, but the next one, the other girl, luckily landed a straight punch when Devin wanted to finish the match with the same kick she had been using from the beginning. This was expected, perhaps Devin didn't want to reveal too much of her cards for in Devin's match, she had been making the same feint, giving her opponent the impression that that was the only attack she knew. But the real goal of doing this was to prepare the opponent for a feint that isn't really a feint, thus scoring a point with an attack the enemy thinks will never reach her body. And that's how Devin, who smiled slightly, initiated the match with straight kicks, and just as she was about to do the same kick, she ducked, forcefully hit her opponent's legs, and brought her down. Point, winner. The referee pointed to Devin, who was breathing heavily and smiled as she ran towards Dash. Did you see my trap? That was amazing, you totally fooled her. Dash was amazed at Devin's development in the match, with that perception, she was sure to reach the final. Mr. Kim on the side looked at those lovebirds and said nothing, he would have preferred to be part of the audience, since he had students who didn't need him. He only hoped that the new students he would receive at the dojo were not as talented, only then could he be entertained in that place. After the two initial matches, it was again the boy's turn, and Dash was called along with Xander Stone. Look at me, Bo. 
look at each other, Bo. Dash and Xander greeted each other, and then the referee started the match. Fight. When Dash saw Xander Stone, he noticed that competitive spirit in his eyes. However, Dash, who had his own personal goals in this tournament, wouldn't lower the intensity of the fight. Fight. Dash's eyes were fixed on Xander, who was the first to start the fight by throwing high kicks. Although these strikes were strong, they weren't enough to penetrate Dash's defense, so he responded with two quick punches, to test the other party's defense more precisely. Compared to his strength and speed, his reaction to feints is slow, so I think his perception of the fight isn't good. Of course, Dash's thoughts were based on the preliminary matches, and because he had long been mentally prepared to embrace this competition, he could predict the movements of his opponents. Like movements falling onto his arms like raindrops, time passed very slowly as Dash dodged Xander's attacks. The shouts, sounds of coaches, and many other things were nullified in Dash's ears, who, using the Northern Dragon style of fighting, began by receiving the blows, adapting to the enemy, and when ready, he moved. The moment Dash shifted from defense to offense, his sleeves, like large whips, began punishing Xander's arms, who immediately, feeling the pain, began to retreat. Seeing this, Dash, who realized that Xander was about to attack with a kick, stepped back and in response, launched a powerful low kick. As long as Dash hit the right spot, he could knock down his opponent, and if he failed to do so, he could quickly advance to score the point in a forceful impact. Hum. Xander staggered from the kick he received in his lower body, and when he thought this hadn't been considered a point, he was about to raise his guard when suddenly a straight punch hit under his shoulder. Point. The referee shouted as Xander retreated due to the impact. Effective blow Dash murmured as he stepped back with a cold expression. Dash's seriousness when fighting was admirable. None of his relaxed and joking personality was highlighted when he fought, giving a certain intimidation to opponents older than him. Everyone thought Dash had serious personality issues, but what no one knew was why Dash fought. He didn't want to feel weak again, he didn't want to die of weakness, and if he somehow met his end, he wanted to feel anything but regrets and pain. For that sole reason, Dash fought, every blow he executed was covered with a fierceness and rage that he only released when he fought. His blows contained everything accumulated in his past life, so compared to any karate student, no one could match up. Devin knew that no one was a match for Dash, and those great masters or talented ones, would eventually be surpassed by her friend who fought for something more than just victory. Xander could feel Dash's excitement for fighting, and after an exchange of blows, he knew that the competitive spirit alone wasn't enough to win. No, he believed he didn't have the spirit to defeat Dash, but he was prepared to go all the way to the end. Fight. When the match resumed, Dash took a step forward and began attacking Xander with superior blows. His speed, which had overwhelmed his opponent after a warm-up, was the reason Dash connected a kick to Xander's stomach, who fell to the ground. Point. Ah. Xander wanted to get up, but he felt as if all the air had left his lungs, and he couldn't continue with the fight. Seeing this, the referee signaled Dash as the winner, and after a salute, he stepped off the arena. Dash didn't feel sorry for his opponents, he wasn't the same when he fought because if he was, it would be better not to fight. Although he wasn't cruel, he never held back when fighting his opponents, and that was just a bit of his respect. Well done, Dash. Mr. Kim nodded towards Dash, who still seemed overwhelmed by the match. Devin handed him a blanket and said, We were indeed strong, it seems everything we did was enough to crush our rivals. He's a good fighter, but he lacks combat experience he doesn't have yet to predict my blows. Dash didn't discriminate against Xander. On the contrary, he admired him as a fighter due to his good talent at a young age. It seemed that this guy was the same age as Devin, for that very reason, Dash had no complications facing him. Passing through the matches, Dash's next opponent was Silva, who had completely defeated his opponent, and had advanced to the next round. On the other hand, Dash saw how Sam, Daniel's daughter, had reached the semi-finals and nodded approvingly at her good skills, all inherited from her father. He just didn't expect her to beat Devin, he wanted to think that she wouldn't have any ruthless spirit not to lose, like her father did before. It wouldn't be fair to his friend. But even though she was good, more precisely, he was sure that Devin would win securely. Devin's kicks were in another category, so after the quarterfinals ended, the semifinals began. Silva, you'll face the Sakura Bushido kid, both he and the girl are unbeatable in this tournament, so you must injure him enough for Marcus to finish him in the final, understand? The Crust Dojo Sensei, who led his team to the championship last year, 
knew that these kids would be impossible to beat. However, if he wanted his dojo to win consecutively, he had to do everything possible in the male division. Should I go for his knee? Silva asked, looking at Sensei Santiago. Santiago scorned his student's lack of intellect and said, Don't be foolish, you won't be able to harm him, even if your intention is to hurt him. First, let him feel confident. When he drops his guard, aim for one of his eyes, and everything will be fine in the next round. And Tony Silva nodded. If there was something he had to do to be compliant with his sensei, he would do it. He would be paid enough, he was aware of the old man's history, and knew he secretly ran an underground fight club for criminal gangs. Having a club was just an excuse to find good fighters or money-needing masters. If losing this tournament meant the end of their dojo as the center of attention this year, they had to do something to prevent that from happening, and endure until next year if possible. How much will you pay me? Enough for you to cover your mother's rent this month and medical bills. Didn't you ask for help a few days ago? Well, here's a job for you. Dash was a strong warrior and could be more ruthless, a rough diamond that could be useful, but he was useless now due to his young age. This place stinks. I should make plans to move somewhere where birds don't defecate Santiago, the cross karate sensei, grew bored watching these dull fights, if there was no blood, it wasn't fun for him. The fights had been long and much heavier, because three points were required to win the battle. This demanded true combat skills from the fighters, going beyond luck or scoring two points to win. Dash, who had seen the leaderboard, knew his opponent was Silva, a 16-year-old guy who was quite good with kicks. If he managed to reach the final, his opponent would be Marcus Rosado from the same dojo as Silva or Oliver Bruss from Topanga Karate. It's the quarterfinals. Remember not to trust yourself and always be observant. When she saw that both were in the final, she was genuinely happy that they could have the chance to win, and if they did, at least they would have triumphed in the valley. A win and enter the final. Devon nodded and stepped onto the mat ready to give her all, but this time her opponent was an incredible veteran fighter, who, although she hadn't participated in valley tournaments, had sought others in different states. Sasha Petit, a 15-year-old karate fighter, was four years older than Devon, so it was entirely normal that she would lose in the eyes of others. Devon clenched her fists and walked towards the arena. There was no doubt that she would face possibly the best opponent she could have in this division, so she wouldn't hold back at all. How long have you been learning karate? No, judging by your hands and fighting style, you're incorporating other martial arts into karate, but I like that. Among all these girls, you, who are just one more, are better equipped. Upon hearing Sasha's words, Devon frowned and said, I would talk less and fight more. I wouldn't want to grow fond of you before crushing you. Charming. If you were my age, that dream might come true. It's a pity that it's just a girl who will cry after losing. Sasha smiled at Devon, who didn't respond further. At least she wasn't foolish, if she could be easily provoked, the battle would be even more boring than Sasha believed, but that was okay. At least she hoped to win another title in this historically significant place. Look at me, Bo. Look at each other, Bo. Devon clenched her fists, stabilized her breathing, and lowered her guard position a bit more than usual. Since she had started training, losing to younger students was never an option for her. She had improved on the mistakes she had made, and today, she would put everything into practice. Consequently, even though she wouldn't tell Dash, she trained at home thinking about this tournament, and how important it could be for the opening of Sakura Bushido Dojo, especially for Dash, who wanted to win and never lose. Devon promised to win, so, as she never broke the promises she made, today wouldn't be the day she lost. So, after relaxing, she patiently waited for the referee's announcement to begin. Fight. Under the anxious gaze of the audience that had been supporting Devon Lee, the smallest girl still competing, they grew concerned upon learning that her opponent was a very talented girl. As soon as the referee started the fight, Devon began moving in circles to disorient Sasha, all the while keeping her guard up calmly. All right, get ready. Upon hearing this warning signal, Sasha smiled slightly as she advanced towards Devon and threw a kick. The serene expression on her face turned fierce, and her seemingly simple kick was a feint. Devon recognized this attack as one she had been training for a long time. Under this unexpected scenario, Devon gritted her teeth and relied on her instincts. At this point, Sasha would deliver a soft kick to switch it into a spinning kick with her right leg, exposing her only supporting leg. Devon knew what to do to win this first encounter. When Devon saw her opponent's figure approaching, she moved her arms to the perfect height to block the initial feigned kick. 
The moment the kick was blocked, she swiftly ducked, sweeping her right leg. At this point, Sasha was somewhat surprised as she felt a strong impact the moment she was about to execute the spinning kick, causing her to lose balance completely. Ah. Sasha screamed as she fell backward, she had been taken down by a girl four years younger. Point for Lee, back to your positions. After taking down Sasha with a sudden kick, Devin walked to her spot with a hidden joy, as her prediction had been just as she thought. It seems that little tricks won't work against you, I must get more serious. Sasha got up from the ground and looked at Devin with deep admiration. She had let her guard down and lost a point just when she thought she would go undefeated in this tournament. Ready. Fight. This time, Devin started with direct kicks. Her goal now was to test Sasha's defense, even if she had to lose a point for not concentrating as before, and follow her fighting style. Sasha blocked the kicks this time, and positioning herself behind Devin, she attempted to kick her. However, she was even more surprised when her seemingly confused rival jumped and kicked her shoulder, knocking her to the ground. No point, block. Sasha jumped to her feet, this time, she would stop playing with her opponent, and start the real battle. If that's what she wanted, she would crush Devin. Taking the initiative this time, she unleashed a powerful kick using all her strength, completely breaking Devin's defense. Just as she was about to recover, a kick from her opponent's right leg hit the bottom of her chest. The referee frowned upon seeing this kick, obviously, Sasha was bigger than Devin, so there was no need to use so much force. However, penalizing her with a point for it was too harsh, so he said, point. If you use excessive force again, you will be penalized with a point. She's exaggerating Sasha thought as she saw Devin getting up. It was true that if she used excessive force, a point could be deducted, or she might even be disqualified, so from now on, she would restrain herself. Devin, holding the area of the hit, looked at Sasha coldly. She never thought she could be attacked in that way, but now she knew something she didn't before. Ready. Fight. Devin raised her guard again, patiently waiting for Sasha's attack, and as soon as she moved, Devin did too. Pum. Just when Sasha believed she had the advantage, Devin's close combat skills surprised her, making her want to retreat. But at that point, an elbow attack landed gently on the side of her shoulder. Point, back to your corners. Just one more point Devin thought as she raised her guard once again. Fight. Now. Just as Devin's voice rose with a straight kick from her leg, Sasha, leveraging her longer legs, hit Devin's only free leg, successfully knocking her off balance. Point. Devin clenched her fists as she desperately searched for a way to defeat her opponent, and just as the referee was about to start the fight again, a voice came from behind. Time. Mr. Kim, who was standing next to Dash, shouted, and she approached upon realizing they did it to buy time. She has much more experience and now knows how to use her height. I don't know what to do, should I focus again on her legs to take her down? Mr. Kim nodded and said, it won't work. The only way to win is by landing a high kick to her face. That's impossible, her height is. Dash held Devin's cheeks and shouted, focus. A. Eh? Devin looked at Dash surprise, but she fell silent, knowing that many people supported her, and it was ridiculous to say that winning would be impossible. Dash looked at his friend seriously while holding her cheeks and said, listen well. You're talented, unique, and intelligent. Always remember that you shouldn't compete or compare yourself with anyone, because you have that sparkle that no one else can have remember, in victory and defeat, we'll always be together. You can do it. Devin's eyes instantly regained their sparkle, the despair on her shoulders disappeared, and the need to win at all costs vanished. I'll do my best. That's the spirit, Devin, finish her. Sasha came alone, she hadn't officially joined a dojo, and didn't believe it was necessary, since she had learned enough to never be defeated, especially in this place. Do you need some motivation from your boyfriend to stop feeling like you're about to lose the match? Devin raised her guard, didn't need to respond, and took a deep breath, regaining the calm that she had when the fight began. In the moment the referee approached, she thought about what she would do to win this match. Ready. Fight. Just as the referee's voice faded away, Devin's eyes narrowed. In a single step, she moved fiercely towards Sasha, clenching the five fingers of her right hand and attacking her opponent's chest. Approaching with Devin's attack, Sasha did not retreat. Furthermore, to the amazement of the crowd, she took a step forward, her extended right hand moving quickly to the side to stop Devin's fist. The palm of Sasha collided with Devin's fist, sending the latter backward. Just as Devin's fist was deflected, her stance changed abruptly, all just to evade the next attack Sasha had sent her way. 
With a new posture, she clenched both fists and, after dodging a few kicks, launched a fierce attack. Devon's fists were much faster, there was no need to consider her kicks, as in close combat, all she needed was to target a point. Remember Devon, let's improve our speed, and we'll win Sasha was desperate. If her defense wasn't enough to stop Devon's attacks and failed even once, she would lose the entire match, and that was something she couldn't let happen. When she finally managed to establish a clear distance from Devon, she saw in a fraction of seconds that she was at a distance where her rival's fist wouldn't reach. Sasha thought she would win in this exchange of blows. Pum. But when the blow echoed, Devon, who had thrown a punch with her left hand, stopped halfway and instead, with her right leg, launched a spinning kick, exposing her body, which could have played a very bad strategy. Devon was betting it all, this blow would determine whether she won or lost. And the moment Sasha saw Devon's spinning kick, she thought it would be aimed at her face. She thought that for a few seconds, giving her the opportunity to penetrate her defenses and hit her stomach. Point, Lee wins. There was a dead silence for a few seconds as the crowd processed what they had just seen. But after that time, everyone cheered and celebrated Devon's victory achieved through pure strategy and instinctive fighting. I won. Devon, with an excited face, ran towards Dash, who was ecstatic about her incredible advancement to the final. It's not that he didn't believe she could win, it was just incredible that she had defeated someone superior in this fight. By the time Sasha could get up from the kick to her ribs, she looked at Devon, and after a few seconds, she turned and walked away. She had lost, and the shame and humiliation she had felt today were new sensations, so she couldn't stay a moment longer in this place. You were amazing, Devon, congratulations. Mr. Kim was more than surprised, he had seen something he didn't think would happen, going beyond the limits of talent. After that fight, the next one was Marcus's, leaving Dash and the guy named Silva from Cross Karate for the last in the semifinals. Dash was supposed to face Marcus in the final if he made it, but first, he had to worry about Silva, as he wasn't an ordinary warrior. Looking back, during the qualifiers for the quarterfinals, Dash had observed the fights of the participants who had many more chances to advance, and it wasn't difficult to see how they won. During this period, the strongest rivals were always in cross karate, and that's something he had to be very attentive to because of the karate style they used. Dash could clearly feel that none of the participants were weak, but compared to Silva and Marcus, those two were really good. In just a few minutes and quickly, Marcus had crushed his opponent Oliver, and had advanced to the final. His arrogant gaze fixed on Dash, and he smiled slightly, murmuring that he looked forward to meeting him in the final. His karate is used to cause harm, you must be careful not to get hit in the muscles because they focus on hitting, trying to numb the nerves. Listening to Mr. Kim's words, Dash nodded and said, maybe Oliver didn't take it, but Marcus's first hits were to slow down his movements, and he ended up scoring points by taking advantage of it. Devon, who had returned, saw Dash's fight was about to begin, so she focused again to see if she could be of help. I'll win quickly and leave everything for the final, that's the only option to have the advantage. Dash thought as he walked towards the arena. The referee looked at the competitors and nodded, extending his hand straight up, saying, look at me, Bo. Look at each other, Bo. Dash and Silva greeted each other. Then the referee started the match. Fight. When Dash raised his guard, the crowd began to cheer excitedly. His fights, especially after eliminating that big participant, had caused an incredible sensation, making everyone like the male fights even more. Dash closed his eyes slightly, and when Silva moved towards him, he attacked fiercely with his right leg aimed at his opponent's face. Pum. His high kick was unpredictable. Silva, who wanted to close the distance, received the fast upon connecting his first swift kick. Dash returned to his position, and coldly eyed Silva, who was getting up while holding his cheek, looking at Dash with resentment. Let me see you. The referee didn't initiate the combat until Silva showed him his cheek. Upon seeing only a red mark, he nodded and prepared to start the fight again. Dash paid no attention to the glares directed at him, since his expression wasn't the friendliest. He sensed that everyone displayed that ferocity to intimidate the enemy or appear more ruthless. Easily resolving the first point, his eyes shifted to an old man behind Silva, who was weakly smiling. At this point, Silva also felt his sensei's gaze, so he remained unfazed by his opponent's impressive skills, and prepared to start the fight once more. Fight. Silva cast him a discreet glance and began approaching slowly. Dash, you got this, finish him. 
Behind him, Devin clenched her fists with excitement, sending him small shouts of encouragement. Under the watchful eyes of the audience, Dash began assessing the distance against Silva, and approached slowly while evaluating his movements. Knowing that his speed was his greatest asset, Dash wouldn't miss any chance to win in attacks that didn't suit his opponent in this competition. At one point, they both moved and started exchanging blows, each trying to score a point to win. Before the fight, Silva thought he could defeat Dash without causing harm, but seeing that his skills were clearly inferior filled him with a great sense of weakness. After a few seconds of fighting, the audience's gaze was in complete silence. No one wanted to blink, eager to know what would happen seconds later, and everyone witnessed Silva's fist colliding with Dash's defenses. Dash shook his hands as he tried to assess the form of attack. Pump. 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 The tremendous sounds of the punches hitting Dash's arms could be heard in the silent surroundings. But at one point, knowing the trajectory of his opponent's attacks, Dash released a low attack, causing Silva to land just outside the permitted combat perimeter. Point. He was out of the perimeter, how the hell is that a point? The impact was inside, there's a point in favor of Hale. Said the referee, addressing Kusker Karate Sensei. Do you think I don't know the rules? Sensei Santiago glared at the referee and, with his gruff voice, drew everyone's attention in the surroundings. Silva, noticing that the referee's attention was on Santiago, saw Dash's back as he retreated to his place and said, Hey, I'm learning a lot in this fight. Dash stopped, turned slightly, and looked at Silva, who was still sitting on the ground and getting up. He simply nodded, and in the moment he turned again, Silva took advantage and ran towards him. Devon, who was delighted that Dash was winning effortlessly, was about to talk to Mr. Kim and find out where she could improve. But at that moment, behind Dash, she saw Silva moving towards him. What's happening? The same question crossed many people's minds. Obviously, the fight had not yet started, so why was Silva attacking Dash from behind? Dash, behind you. Looking at the expressions everyone was giving him, Dash's alert senses heightened, and the moment he turned his body to the side, he saw Silva approaching running. What the hell? Dash had seen the crowd behind Silva roaring with anger. The seconds seemed to become even slower, and knowing what was happening, he became furious. How dare you attack from behind, especially in a competition? I'm sorry finishing these words, Silva didn't want to execute any karate move, and instead attacked Ash with his elbow at the vertex of his brow. At least there, he landed the first blow. Dash, who had reacted slowly, received the blow. The impact was powerful, and for a moment, he felt like his world was spinning. But knowing that another blow was headed for the same spot, he decided to fall backward, grabbing Silva's leather, as he continued to deliver continuous elbow strikes. Crash. Feeling that his forehead was covered in a hot liquid that wouldn't stop dripping, Dash soon saw blood on Silva's elbow. At that moment, Dash's days looked filled with fury. No, there was no fear on his face or anything related to that. All his plans could be ruined today, and it was because of an attack from a stranger he never thought would strike him from behind. Seeing that Silva didn't seem to stop, Dash quickly maneuvered his legs using jujitsu techniques. Being on the ground, he tightly gripped Silva's neck with his legs, and used his right hand to prevent further strikes. Silva felt the air becoming more difficult to obtain, so he used his left hand to try to push Dash's leg away, but that was a fatal mistake. Influenced by adrenaline, Dash threw consecutive punches at Silva's forehead. His blows were aimed to cause double the damage he had received, and all the anger he tried to contain whenever he fought, was now completely unleashed. Crack. 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 In less than a minute, Dash, who knew Silva was bleeding from the forehead, didn't hold back and continued to attack. His expression was anything but satisfied, it was ferocious, and his grunts matched the rhythm of his blows. When the referees, who were far away, saw Silva's sudden action, they all ran. And seeing Dash's reaction, as they approached, they tried to pull him away. Do you want to fight dirty? I'll teach you a few things about that, shouted Dash as he continued to hit the area where Silva was bleeding. Let him go now. The referees held Dash's right arm, who continued to hit Silva with force and brutality, unleashing all his anger. Dash, stop now. Mr. Kim, who had jumped into the arena immediately, pulled him away, smiling as he saw Silva almost unconscious and bleeding just like him. Paying back in the same coin, that's what he had just done. Let me see. Mr. Kim saw all the blood dripping from one part of Dash's face, who was full of adrenaline. 
But Dash, who was looking at Marcus from Cross Karate, smiled at him in the same way he had done before. At this point, he didn't want to process what had happened, but if this damage was attributed to anything, it was to one of the books of Cross Karate, and Marcus belonged to it. See you in the final. Dash murmured before turning his gaze away. It's not a deep cut, you just bleed a lot. Mr. Kim said as he looked at Dash, who seemed to have controlled his impulse. Devin, by his side, held his arm as if fearing he would launch himself again at Silva, who was bleeding even more than Dash. At least, this prevented her from going straight to that coward and attacking him. He apologized Dash murmured, feeling even more confused. Was that before or after he hit you? Mr. Kim asked as he took Dash out of the arena and led him to the infirmary. Before he attacked me, I heard him apologize Devin, who was beside him, asked, Does that serve as an apology for what he did to you? No, but I have a feeling those weren't his personal intentions. Could it be an order from his sensei to give the victory to his dojo? Dash, sitting on a cot, watched as a doctor examined the small cut that had bled a lot. It makes sense now that you mention it that way, but most likely, both will be disqualified anyway. Mr. Kim wasn't being pessimistic, it was just that the state in which Silva ended up after attacking Dash, was three times worse than what he had caused. That would be terrible, no one from the audience would be satisfied with that decision, and the tournament's reputation would go downhill. Now that it has this abundant audience, it's impossible for the committee to choose to expel Dash. Devon argued with Mr. Kim, still feeling furious about how that coward attacked her friend. The first thing to consider is whether he can continue fighting. Aren't you thinking the same? The doctor asked while applying some kind of liquid to Dash's wound. Of course, I'm going to fight. Dash interrupted the doctor, showing a calm expression. Did anyone record that? Spitting out the drink he held in his hands, many stood up and put their hands on their heads, watching how things had spiraled out of control to this point. Never before had anything similar happened, the closest were illegal blows aimed at hurting rivals, but what they had just witnessed was far beyond the illegal, it was an act of homicide. Give me the data on that boy. I want to know why he did that before I unleash my anger on all his loved ones. Frederick, with a calm expression in his eyes, was about to get up and check on his son, when suddenly he saw him smashing the head of the boy who had hit him. It seems our son didn't train in vain. At least he responded correctly. Elena got up from her seat, and after seeing that the referees had intervened in the fight, she walked towards the infirmary. Their expressions were calm, only they could perceive how angry they were, and the worst part was how they hid it from other people. For God's sake, I hope Ash is okay. Zack and Zoe immediately followed Elena to find out how serious the wound on his forehead was. Due to the blood, they couldn't judge beyond the fact that his forehead was opened, as any head injury tends to bleed a lot. After witnessing this, many people in the crowd were slightly alarmed. They never expected someone to break the rules in such a brutal way, and the most shocking thing was that the boy who had been hit unexpectedly responded in a more violent manner. Everyone could still feel the punches Dash landed on Silva echoing throughout the place, and how he kept hitting despite the blood pouring uncontrollably from the other boy's head. That boy really suits my tastes. At some point, he may need to seek real fights, so it would be good to get in touch with him somehow. Sensei Santiago got excited seeing Dash's character, and a vague idea formed in his mind. It seems like he fears nothing. Why go to such extremes? Marcus murmured to Santiago, who watched as Dash was taken to the infirmary. He fears nothing because the passion he feels when using his body to win is greater than life or death. You can only obtain that when you're not afraid to lose anything to achieve your goals. At a young age, he's incredibly skilled, much more than anyone we've known. Yes, not bad Marcus looked at Santiago and asked, will he continue fighting? Obviously, he will. Nothing can stop him after blaming us for what Silva did, Santiago smiled slightly as he said this and turned away. Disqualified that delinquent. Dash Hale must be the winner. What the hell are they considering so much? Daniel had approached the committee after seeing what happened and said, we must disqualify Silva, but people won't agree to see Dash disqualified after defending himself simply. Did you see how he left that boy's face? Asked a woman with a slightly distressed face. Daniel moved his hands to the side and said, he was defending himself. If he hadn't stopped Silva, he probably would have lost an eye. What else can we consider? Daniel is right. Even if we don't disqualify Dash, he probably can't continue with the fight, so it clearly wouldn't be a bad idea for us to give that option. Yes, but we must leave the male final until the semi-finals are over. 
There's one more match, so we'll see if we can delay the male final and have the female division fight for now. Daniel thought this was understandable, so he nodded and approved that decision to keep everyone under control. It was clear that Dash's response to Silva's aggression was not justified, but they let it pass, since it was obvious that it was in self-defense. Dad, will he be able to continue fighting? Sam, seeing her father approach, asked with a slight concern on her face, realizing that someone's hard work could likely be affected by another. Daniel stroked his daughter's head and said, When I fought in my youth, I was injured similarly. Many thought I couldn't continue, but I still got up and won the tournament. However, an open wound on the forehead is much more delicate than a wound on the leg. In this case, I think it would be better for Dash not to continue fighting. What a shame in the infirmary, Dash should receive medical treatment, the cut on his forehead didn't need stitches to close, they applied small medical tape bandages, and after a few, it stopped bleeding. It doesn't look as bad as it seemed, but you should still consider if it's worth it, Devin wanted to say more, but she didn't want to be the one to stop Dash's choice on whether to continue fighting. At that moment, Frederick and Elena entered the infirmary, followed by Devin's parents, who were also very concerned about this disastrous event. How do you feel, son? Dash looked at the crowd and, after looking at his son, slightly red, swollen, and with medical tape over the cut, said, I'm fine, it was a small cut, so there's nothing to worry about. Hmm, you're right about that, but I think it's better if you don't continue competing. Elena didn't want to see her son bleed anymore, she didn't want to witness that scene again. But Frederick beside her didn't share the same idea. He looked at his son and asked, do you want to keep competing? Frederick. Ignoring his wife, Frederick looked at his son's expression, which didn't seem like that of a child who was scared or had given up, and said, Make the decision on your own, we'll support you. Just remember, if you fight, don't show your back to the enemy again. We'll be in the crowd waiting for your decision. Remember, there's no one who can stop you from doing what you want. Devon's parents knew the Hale family by word of their daughter, and beyond protecting their son, they prepared him. They had no right to criticize someone else's upbringing, but if it were them, they would have firmly refused to let their daughter continue fighting. Exiting the room, Elena looked at her husband and said, wasn't he furious? Did you see our son's expression? Maybe our upbringing has greatly affected the way he faces problems, but the way his hunger to win is awakened is by fighting. If I stop him now, it might mark him forever. Wasn't it the same for you when you were young? Elena frowned, she hated to admit it, but Frederick was right, so she said, but I guess that won't stop us from getting to the bottom of the truth, right? Oh, of course not. If necessary, I'll break the bones of that sensei who seems to have a hunger for winning. But it's a shame he ignored the manner and the person Dash had to go through to achieve it. Frederick's expression was similar to Dash's when he was hitting Silva with the intention of causing harm. As a father, he won't allow his son to suffer at the hands of idiots trying to stop him. If the enemies can't be dealt with by his son alone, as a father, it's his job to do so. Let's go visit that young man. Is he in there? Sir, I think it's not the best time to argue with a kid. Do you think I'm so low as to argue with a kid? I just want to know how he's doing. The last thing I want to hear is that we didn't take responsibility for something our son did. Outside the infirmary, Silva, who had stitches on his face due to the wound he suffered when Dash continuously hit him, was lying on a bed. He hadn't expected someone like Dash to overpower him and leave him in this situation after being attacked unexpectedly, but as it had happened, it was something he regretted to some extent. At that moment, when the door was opened, he saw a man in a suit entering, followed by a beautiful woman who looked at him coldly. He could guess who these people were, but still waited in silence. You're much worse than Dash. How do you feel? Frederick didn't show his anger, he looked at the guy named Antony, and wanted to know exactly why he attacked his son, before doing anything that could end the peaceful life of those who had messed with his family. I'm fine, but aren't you angry because I hurt your son? Antony asked as he fixed his gaze on the calm face of the man next to him. Hurt him? Elena scoffed coldly at the confidence of that guy and said, you're not capable of hurting him. Right now, he's recovering to fight in the final, and I don't doubt for a moment that he'll win. That's impossible, but we're not here to yell at you or give you our hatred. We want to know why you did it, and if you answer with only the truth, it's more than enough for us. Frederick looked directly into the eyes of that guy. Shouldn't there be some reason? Don't play with me, kid. If you attack my family without any reason, that means I can end yours for the same reason. Frederick said coldly while receiving a phone call. Do you have the results? 
Hmm. It all depends on what this idiot kid tells me. Stay on the sidelines for now, and if I give the green light, crush his family. Antonio looked at Frederick with white eyes and asked, What are you talking about? Elena walked toward the door, and seeing no one there, she nodded to Frederick, who said, I'll open your mother's head, who is now in the hospital for the same reason you opened my son's head, if you don't give me the real reason you attacked my son. Antony trembled, and his heart began to beat strongly. He looked at Frederick with absolute terror and asked, Are you serious? I just lost control, I didn't want to hurt your son that way. It seems you don't value your family much. I wonder if I should also go after your brothers, friends, and pets. Don't you dare threaten my family. Frederick smiled slightly and said in a contemptuous tone, You're the one who messed with mine. If you don't have balls of gold, it's better to lower your head and answer my questions. If you respond with any nonsense that wastes my time, our conversation will end. And Tony Silva, who had sat on the bed, looked at Frederick and visibly trembled. But after thinking for a moment, he began to explain his reasons. It's a shame. It hurts me the way the poor try to get something by hurting others. If you were an adult, I would have left you disabled, but you're a tree that can still be fixed, so don't disappoint me. Frederick stood up, and when Elena came out of the door, he said, We'll take care of your medical expenses, also your mother's, and we'll pay years rent for your family. If you turn this shame into inspiration, then that means you've at least cleared your name. Elena looked at Antony and warned, but remember, scum, if you try to hurt my son in that way again, not only will I crush you, but I'll first visit your mother. Nobody messes with the Hale family. Remember that clearly when you go to sleep. As they walked away, Antony remained in the room, crying from the wave of emotions that covered his mood. He truly regretted it, but he needed the money, and the only way to get it was this way. What will you do with that old man who ordered to hurt our son just to win this stupid tournament that barely has any fame in the valley? Elena walked alongside her husband and asked as they returned to their seats. Oh, I'll close his stupid dojo, and if he doesn't disappear from our lives, it's as simple as cleaning him up Frederick, saying these words, didn't flinch, his cold gaze soon returned to normal. Back in the arena, everyone awaited the committee's decision, and just when they thought it would take longer, an announcement was made. Ladies and gentlemen, you have all been waiting for the decision we would make regarding such a regrettable incident, and as we thought similarly, we have decided to expel Antony Silva from the tournament. That would put Dash directly in the final, so if he decides to participate, we'll see him fight after the women's semi-final. Taking this decision, we now witness the last semi-final of the women's category, and let's give a big applause to our competitors. The entire audience cheered upon hearing that this decision was made. So after the next match was announced, and the mat had been cleaned, the referee climbed back into the arena. All right, daughter, it's your turn. Daniel looked at his daughter and supported her from the side. This victory will be mine, father. Sam said with complete confidence. Samantha LaRusso's match is underway. If you want to keep fighting, that will be your decision, but you must understand that if you get hit again in your wound, you may not be recovered for the tournament in China, Mr. Kim said, returning to the room where Dash was talking to Devin about some advice for his next fight. Upon these harsh words from Mr. Kim, Dash was naturally thrilled to participate in both tournaments. Now that he was in the final, he knew that even if he bled again, he wouldn't miss this opportunity that would take him directly to China. Thanks to all his effort, he had reached the final. It was naturally a great novelty for Dash to participate in such events, because, for him, all of this still felt like a sweet dream that he wholeheartedly wanted to embrace. Although the sensation of bleeding was horrible, there was no wound on his body that would make him stop, because he had experienced even more traumatic things than any of the people in this room could imagine. Just thinking about how he felt until recently, his hands itched at the mere thought of quitting a fight. That's right, Dash. You've come a long way, so you must consider staying in the best condition now to be able to participate in that tournament you say you want to be a part of. If you are injured again in the same area, things may not turn in your favor, and you might not be ready for the tournament in China, so, Devon's mother, advised Dash, who had been silent until now. As time passed, Dash looked at Devon, and she nodded. Let's make a deal. If I receive a blow to my wound, the fight will be over. That's much better than not participating and doing it anyway. I want you to know that my purpose is not to make you worry, but to show all the hard work I've been putting in with Devin. There's no malice involved, Dash said. Alright, that's a good proposal. What do you think of that Mr. Kim? Mr. Kim nodded, satisfied with Dash's proposal, who had no intention of giving up from the start. 
The fact that he wanted to keep competing was something to admire simply because many kids his age at this moment would be crying out of fear. Then my match goes before Devon's, right? That's correct. As far as we know, Sam's match hasn't ended yet, so you still have time to stabilize your mental state. Ha, ha Dash smiled cheekily, getting his way, while thinking to himself, it's a surprise that my parents weren't against me participating in this tournament after being injured. Maybe some things have changed after getting a second chance. Devon, now we have time to analyze your opponent, and what you need to focus on is the defenses of that girl named Sam. Dash looked at his friend, who was still silent, and began explaining some details for her to win the fight. The reason Daniel LaRusso's style resembles Northern Dragon Kung Fu is simply because the karate he was taught comes from China. In that case, with similar martial arts, what Dash could recommend to Devon is to stay calm. Hmm, then I'll focus on feints and keep my distance if possible. If Devon didn't have much training experience thanks to her effort and Mr. Kim's teachings, she might not understand how to face Sam's karate, who had been winning until now. If you make correct use of your feints, the fight is yours. But remember not to panic when you get hit, and it gives your opponent a point. The most important thing is to maintain control in the martial art I'm teaching you, so if you lose control even for a second, things won't go well for you. After hearing these words, Devon nodded and said, I don't know what it is, but Sam hasn't had any tough opponents throughout the tournament, and that's why she has reached the final. I don't want to call this luck since that doesn't exist, but it's certainly unusual. Dash shook his head while letting out a long sigh. He didn't want to believe that something known as the power of the script existed in real life, giving someone a magical win with much less training, and a new move learned the day before. It's not that he compared himself to those events, since he knows all the hard work he has done and what motivates his fights. But it's strange that such a thing happened in real life. At least he didn't want that to happen to his friend when she faces Samantha LaRusso if she makes it to the final. If luck were to be inherited, Daniel LaRusso must be the reason his daughter won. Truth be told, even though he admired him, Dash certainly wasn't on his side when he first saw his story. Of course, everyone can think what they want and be free to give their own opinions. Dash, with a slight smile on his face, said, We're in the final, different divisions, but the same goals, so you should be able to win without me telling you anything, since you have everything prepared, right? Like my last fight, I'm not arrogant to think it would be so easy after all, last time, I almost let my emotions take over, and I was about to lose. So now I have a new way to face fights, so you don't have to worry. Dash nodded, committing to Devon. He knew it wouldn't be easy for her to face a defeat, especially with a girl of a similar age, so he now understood that to win, she needed to first keep calm. If we win, we lead until we burst. Make sure to be faster than me, or my fame will increase more than yours in no time, Dash said with an ironic smile as he stood up. At first, Devon was still very agitated by all the things that had happened lately, but seeing Dash being the same as always, she smiled cheerfully and nodded. As long as they support each other, no one will be able to stop them, and without realizing it, both were getting closer to each other. Sorry for the intrusion. If the competitor Dash Hale intends to participate in the final, he must be ready in five minutes. An administration man entered the infirmary and announced. We'll be there. Dash Hale will participate. Mr. Kim, who looked at the entering man and addressed his students, said, All right, guys, it's time to make history. Yes, sensei. Dash and Devon sat in unison as they approached the door. Samantha LaRusso, that was brilliant. As Sam returned to her father after winning a hard-fought battle that left her with a leg injury, many of her supporters exclaimed with excitement, wondering if her father's story would repeat itself in his daughter. You did really well, daughter. You have time to recover and see if you can continue, Daniel supported his daughter, and brought some ice to try to ease the pain in Sam's leg, which had received several kicks. Now that she had reached the final, Daniel hoped that his daughter wouldn't give up easily, just as he did back then before winning for the first time. I'm not giving up, I want to know if Lee is better than me or not. At least I want to try, Sam was happy to have won the fight, but for some reason, she believed she could win and wanted to prove it. She never thought she would participate in a karate tournament, but when she heard that the competition was open to women as well, she decided to give it a try after her parents agreed to let her fight in the tournament. She initially prepared herself enough because she wanted to defend herself from those who might cause trouble for them. She never thought that the same training would help her reach the final of a tournament her father had won a long time ago. 
After Sam's duel ended, the competition was about to continue with the final of the men's division, and that would only happen if Dash continued in the competition or decided not to continue. The last four fights of the semi-final were incredible, and all were very notable for the techniques they had mastered throughout their training. In fact, many people believed that effort was not enough for this discipline when children younger than others had won. After the semi-final ended, as predicted, Dash might not continue fighting when only Marcus was in the arena ready to fight. Witnessing the events a moment ago, both you and I wondered if Dash Hale would continue participating in the tournament. It is true that the wound on his face seems serious, but as long as the decision is approved by the doctors, there is nothing we, as spectators, can do. As the presenter said this, just at the moment when a timer was about to be set to announce Dash's disqualification, he entered with his team, and when everyone saw him, the audience erupted in cheers. That boy must be sick. How does he have the balls to participate after almost having his brain knocked out? Were you more drunk than you can handle, old man it's obvious that those blows did nothing to him, he crushed his opponent even when he was attacked by surprise. The presenter, seeing the excitement of the audience and knowing that the battle would continue as planned, smiled excitedly and shouted, All right, let the fight begin. In his seat, Frederick maintained a discreet smile as he watched his son stand bravely in front of his opponent, with no intention of leaving the fight because of a little blood. Elena beside him said, Our son is much crazier about fights than you, it was a blessing that you no longer fight. Sometimes I wish I could, if you hadn't stopped me, I would have crushed that man named Sensei, who ordered that Latin boy to attack our son. Elena smiled and said, you know there are better ways to destroy a person, patience is winning with flavor. You're right. Dash, be careful. Devin next to him looked at her friend seriously and wished him luck. Don't worry, I'll win, and in the meantime, you must rest the fight in your best condition. Dash, after saying this, climbed into the arena and looked at his opponent with complete seriousness. He's here. Marcus sat very excitedly, looking at the wound that Antoni had caused him and smiled slightly. It seems like you thought you would win without fighting, but to your surprise, that won't be the case, and before you lift your dream prize, you must beat me. Dash said, using a more defensive fighting stance to avoid being hit in his open wound. The referee looked at the competitors and nodded, extending his hand straight up and said, Look at me, Bo. Look at each other, Bo. Dash and Marcus greeted each other, then the referee started the match. Fighting. Who Dash was obviously hurt as he felt pain, but by ignoring it and focusing only on this last fight before achieving the glory he sought for the first time in his life, he kept pushing forward. Keeping his wounded area protected, Dash observed Marcus's movements as he approached discreetly, intending to gauge his distance. Now. While everyone watched the fighters sizing each other up, they began to move, and briefly, discreet blows started to be exchanged. Being able to reach the final signifies how strong they are in combat, but Dash, who was here for something more than just talent, didn't plan to hold back even if it meant leaving his wound unprotected. Marcus was the first to take the initiative to be more aggressive. His facial expression was absolutely brutal as he leaped toward Dash with a front kick to his chest. Facing a direct attack with such force, Dash let out a shout and countered using his right hand. But since his blow was blocked, he decided to again keep his distance and devise a proper route to advance. Much faster, I must be more aggressive, Dash instantly reached Marcus's side, and began unleashing a flurry of blows that completely overwhelmed his opponent. While being suppressed by the fierce barrage of attacks, Marcus frowned slightly as he found it impossible to advance. He aligned his hands and, like a straight spear, skillfully maneuvered between Dash's attacks, attempting to strike his face. Seeing a punch approaching and it being too dangerous, Dash dropped his body backward to avoid the attack. As soon as his body touched the ground, he sprang up like a coil. Without giving Marcus the chance to counter, Dash struck his stomach not as forcefully as he wanted, but enough to win the first exchange. Point. You're faster than I thought. You just got lucky this time. Marcus said as he returned to his position, raising his guard again. Due to the movements of his head, a line of blood started to trickle down Dash's cheek. But no one would stop this fight, now that they were fighting, the competition that many had dreamed of achieving in their lives was at stake, and no one was willing to interfere. Ready. Fight. As soon as the referees started the match, Dash quickly advanced, not giving Marcus a break to think about how to defeat him. On the platform above the mat, two figures intertwined as they vigorously fought, exchanging attack techniques and appropriate defenses to prolong the battle. 
With the help of their speed, both looked impressive as they dodged blows. Sam, who do you think will win? Daniel looked at the incredible battle unfolding and asked his daughter, wanting to know her answer. It's hard to say Sam hesitated a lot to give a clear answer to her father's question. Dash had clearly dominated all the fights until he was unexpectedly and illegally attacked by an opponent, resulting in his disqualification. Still, that didn't guarantee Dash winning the competition as he still had to defeat Marcus, and that wouldn't be an easy task. Although Marcus didn't seem very formidable in his previous fights, he was one of the finalists, so his karate should have something good. If that's the case, Dash's victory would be in jeopardy. Because of that, it was quite challenging to determine who would be the winner. Still, due to all the things that had happened and how Dash never gave up, most hoped he would win. While they spoke, the battle on the mat was gradually intensifying towards a climax. Punches and kicks were dodged, while others were blocked, causing a series of sounds that everyone could hear. This skilled interpretation of skills lasted until Marcus was able to land a spinning kick to Dash's side, scoring a point. Point. Dash, without showing emotions, returned to his place and lowered his guard. Now, he left his head wound uncovered, returning to the stance he had always taken before. Fight. As the fight resumed, Marcus was very exhausted from the intense battle, but Dash seemed better prepared in terms of endurance, which began to play heavily against him. Finish it, Dash, you can do it. Devin shouted very excitedly for the battle that Dash was fighting with all his skills. The sudden voice that entered Dash's ears made him anticipate Marcus's attack. His style dictated waiting for the attack to return, it twice as strong. I got you. Dash, who saw Marcus approaching head-on, had the opportunity to launch a kick known as a back kick. It was a famous spinning sidekick that aimed to break through the opponent's defenses and hit them with force. When Dash launched that kick, Marcus, who wanted to end the fight as quickly as possible, was hit, causing him to fall to his knees. Point, two to one. Yes, that's how it's done. Many of those who supported Dash and wanted to see him victorious shouted. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.